This is an event that drivers have been dreaming about. This is the opportunity to have a dream that gets realized. I will run, I will rise, I will grow. I will climb to the place I belong. I will fight like the world's never known. Like the world's never known. A summit. By definition, it's the highest point, the pinnacle. But in reality, it symbolizes so much more. Four drivers are competing for the Truck Series' highest honor. But there's only room for one flag at the top. The season's 23 race battle comes down to one night in the desert where only one will be crowned champion. Let's go with the damn championship! This is Championship Race Day from Phoenix. The night has arrived. It is time to crown a champion. We started with 10, then down to eight, and now four drivers. Corey Heim, Carson Osevar, Ben Rhodes, and Grant Enfinger are vying for a title in the Craftsman Truck Series. We'll crown a champion tonight. Welcome in to Championship Weekend from Phoenix, and welcome into Race Day here on FS1. I'm Caitlin Vinci, alongside my partners here on the Craftsman Truck Series, all season long, Trevor Bain, and a past champion of Todd Bodine, who brought out the championship ring. Got the ring. Bling, got the bling going on. And this is the moment we've been waiting for all season long. It's been a long road to this point. A long road. We started six races ago. We had 10 drivers. Here we are down to four drivers right. with one race. They all made mistakes getting here. All season long you made mistakes. <laughs> but guess what? Tonight they have to perform at the highest level. They can't afford mistakes because guess what? A mistake tonight, you're probably not going to be the champion. There's only a couple predictable things about tonight. Whoever wins is probably going to push that radio button and yell, let's go! <laughs> and then the other, you know, you look back at the season, the other predictable thing is everybody says, well, it was a long day, but on to the next one. Fill in the blank with that track name. There is no on to the next one. This is it. This, this is, is Phoenix. This is championship weekend. This is what they've raced for all season long. It all comes down to this, and it's going to be very exciting. We've talked about it. How did we get here? Here is a look back at the playoffs we saw in the series so far this year. Come on, get up, cause I'm ready to blow. Come on, can't you feel it? Let's get on the road. Regular season's behind us. The playoffs are here. It is the best time of the year. Checkered flag. Ty Majeski gets the win at IRP. Awesome job. This is just the start of a playoff run. Brent Infinger delivers at Milwaukee. Let's get you a checkered flag here, man. Christian Eckes steals the win. Hell yeah. You just outdrove him. The two mats on the outside looking in. 11 on point at Bristol, five to go. He's going to the championship four. Oh, yeah, boys, let's go! And that's Bristol right there. There's the block. Christian Eckes, he's on the outside. Welcome back to the truck series, Brett Moffitt. Wow. Seven drivers will battle for three remaining spots in the championship. I love winning. I love it. President Hosevar is going to race for a championship at Phoenix. Next up, boys, it's the championship weekend from Phoenix. Let's go win the damn championship. There are your championship four, and here's a look at the playoff races so far on the tracks with the winners. You see the champ four drivers won at Milwaukee, Bristol, and Miami, but no championship four contender repeated a win in the playoffs, which brings me to this question. Is this the four drivers we expected back in February to make it to this point? What do you say, Trevor? It's not the four I expected. <laughs> I mean, maybe one or two of those names, but you look back at our championship eight that we're trying to make it to this round, and you could have easily taken the other four names you know you look sure. at Zane Smith you look at Nick Sanchez you look at Christian Eckes you know you go down that list and, and you move over Ty Majeski's on that list and then you look back at their races all year long and say man that could have been our championship four but the four that are here are the ones that deserve to be here because they rose to the occasion when it mattered in this format this is the format we have and they made it count and they're at Phoenix running for a championship well, this isn't the four I expected either but I tell you I like the way they got here, right? They all have different styles. You got a guy like Corey Heim, very calculating, always those top 15, the top 10s, 15 of them in a row, always there at the end, got his three wins. Guy like Carson Hosevar, kind of a hair on fire, <laughs> pedal to the metal, go get him. He, he gets his four wins. And then a guy like Grant Enfinger, very quietly, always there, top 10s, gets his three wins. And then Ben, right? <laughs> he had the toughest year of all of them. Three crew chiefs, got his win at Charlotte. But guess what? 
his experience got on the championship four. Four unique, very unique drivers going for the championship today. It'll be interesting to see who gets it. So earning a title in one of NASCAR's top series doesn't come without pressure. So how do the drivers manage it? We asked them to weigh in on playoff pressure at Media Day this week. We need a I've handled the pressure, I think, pretty well so far. Yeah, I mean, I feel a lot of pressure with this weekend uh, being probably the biggest race of my life. Honestly, like, there's pressure all the time. Usually, for me, when I start to kind of feel the butterflies will be before the race, right before intros, as we're gonna hop in the back of the pace trucks. Everybody else at this point is being carted off in the back of the trucks, and they're taking their ride around, and the last four playoff guys are still loading up. I feel like I'm a person that really focuses on myself, so that's the main way I subside the pressure. You know, just to be able to focus on the things that matter and that are in my control is the main thing that I kind of focus on going into this weekend. People are coming around, they're high five and getting ready. They're saying, hey, you know, good job tonight. Don't, don't ruin the opportunity, something stupid like that. My past, I really feel like that pressure makes me better. I really like being in this position. I've always, you know, felt pressure being a good thing and it motivates me to be better. I don't feel any pressure, you know, I, I think we're plenty capable of winning a championship. We've won the most races. I know there's gonna be pressure, but there's pressure every week. I, I don't know if there's gonna be an excessive amount of, uh, of pressure that, that we're not expecting. It's the fanfare before, beforehand that gets the people, but once I'm in the truck, I'm at home. Very relaxed answers to that question. So who is best poised to handle the pressure? We got two young guys going through this for the first time you're shaking your head. <laughs> I, I, call Not buying it? I call BS on all of it. I don't <laughs> buy any of that. I've been there twice. These guys sit there, they want to tell themselves there's no pressure, fool themselves into thinking that's oh, no big deal. But this is the biggest race of their life, the biggest race of their career. And, you know, I talked about making mistakes. Well, they've all made mistakes except for one this year. You look at these penalties that we've got. Carson Hosevar is the only one that didn't make a penalty in the playoffs. Right now, this is the night that you cannot have those kind of penalties and make those kind of mistakes. And they tried to tell themselves that all yeah, week. Like, hey, exactly. it's just another race. But once they're there, I guarantee you their heart rate monitors right now are telling them another right story through the, through the roof. It's so hard when you're in that position to win a championship. The thing you've chased your whole life, your whole career, when it's right in front of you, one race away, it's so hard to calm down and just take it one step at a time. It's going to be very interesting. These guys are going to have to go mistake-free, of course. So for more out at the racetrack, we now join our boots on the ground, pit reporter Josh Sims, who has the latest from Phoenix on what the vibe and the atmosphere is like out at the racetrack right now. Hey, Josh. Well, Caitlin, this is it. This is the moment these four championship four drivers have been waiting for, a chance to compete for the title. And I can tell you being around these four guys all day long, the emotions have shifted a little bit. Earlier, a lot of the guys were relaxed. For some, it was business as usual. For one of them, Corey Heim, a guy that really doesn't show too much emotion, we actually saw emotion out of him when he won the poll. But now, as the sun has set, I can sense it. I can see it in some of the guys that the pressure is starting to build. It'll be interesting to see how they respond, how they act as we get closer and closer to the green flag dropping. Well, the good thing is I'm going to have a chance to talk with all four of these championship four drivers in just a little bit to see how they're feeling now that it's starting to get real, Caitlin. It really is. Lee is real. Thank you, Josh. Great insight there. We look forward to hearing all those interviews throughout the show. Now, here is where the championship four drivers will start for tonight. Corey Heim, we just heard Josh talk about it, rolling off from the pole. Ben Rhodes starts six. Carson Hosevar will be 13th. Grant Enfinger starting the lowest of the group there in 17th. And we are just getting started here on race day. Phoenix sets the stage for the final race, but what are the spots that can pose challenges for the drivers on track? We'll discuss next. Plus, there's a big youth movement in the series with two young guns in Corey Heim and Carson Hosevar going for the title. We're going to hear from them coming up next. I served my country, but struggled in civilian life. USVS helped me when I needed it the most. I am now an artist with a place to call home. Join USVS on their mission to end veteran homelessness. Make Camel your cause to honor USVS. 
Fox Sports proudly salutes our nation's veterans and the organizations that serve them every day. Our veterans deserve to live with dignity and independence, not on the streets. That is why we are making camo our cause this Veterans Day in support of the Honor U.S. Vets campaign. Post wearing your camo on social with hashtag HonorUSVets and visit honor.usvets.org slash Fox Forward to donate and learn how you can help end veteran homelessness. And welcome back once again to Phoenix, where it's championship weekend for the Craftsman Truck Series. You see all the trucks out there on the grid, which means we're getting closer and closer to racing and closer to finding a champion, which will be very exciting. Now, take a look at this. History in the desert. Truck Phoenix starts for the championship four. One start, only one for Corey Heim, who is on the pole. Ben with the most, though, at eight. You see Carson with four and Grant with six. So let's take a deeper dive, closer look into this racetrack, bring up our track map, courtesy of our friends out at iRacing. And here it is, Phoenix Raceway. We've been doing the season finale here at this track for a number of years. There's the start finish line. Right after that is what, Trevor? We have the dog leg. Ooh, and yes. used to there was grass below the racing surface. Now it's paved and the drivers take advantage of that on restarts. And even in qualifying, we see sparks flying. We see trucks going four or five wide Things on like restarts. This, yeah. They just fan out wherever there's real estate vacant. Well, guess what? It gets a little bit tighter maybe getting into turn one as you funnel down. Well, not really. You know, most racetracks, Trevor, yeah, you go four or five wide like that, you got to funnel to that one groove, not at Phoenix. Turn one, it's been over two years now since they put any kind of traction compound down. They go that four or five wide, and they carry it all the way down in the corner. They run on the apron. They run on the bottom, the middle, and the top. It doesn't matter. There's grip everywhere. Wherever your truck is the best is where you want to run it. Well, you bring up that traction compound. They didn't put it down, but trucks still search around, try to find it. And the same thing in turn three and four. You can run, you know, two lanes wide, maybe not four or five wide. But the most important things in three and four is that it's the last corner before the start finish line. And we've seen a lot of championships won and lost in the very last corner, maybe on a green white checker coming to the start finish. Yeah. Drivers have their hands full as it pertains to this racetrack, no doubt about it. Now, it has similarities to Gateway. Corey Heim, one of the title hopefuls, missed that race due to illness. How do you think that's going to maybe be a disadvantage today, or is it? He's on the pole, right? Well, so, <laughs> he was really Bad fast and in second. <laughs> so, it, right now, he's proven that his team took the information. Jesse Love got in that truck while Corey Heim was out, and they had teammates there running. So, they gathered information, even though Corey wasn't in the truck. And he said that moment was humbling for him and reset his season. Might be part of the reason and he's here yeah. in the yeah. championship four. So I think they've taken that disadvantage, which it probably was, and they flipped it on his head, and now they're on the pole here at Phoenix tonight. Speaking of the flip, on the other side of that, Grant Enfinger won at Gateway. So do you think that will translate over for tonight? Well, I absolutely do think so. And like Trevor said, you know, get all that information, all that data, and if you win the race, obviously you had a good truck. Jeff Hensley had a great setup. But even more than that, they went on and won Milwaukee. Milwaukee is very similar. Long, flat, sweeping corners. Jeff had the same setup. Up, had the same truck, they got it done there. So I truly do believe that it will help them tonight. They're starting a little bit in the back, didn't get a good qualifying run, but by the end, I bet you see him up front. Yeah, what do you think about Grant? Is this going to be carrying over for him? Yeah, I mean, if you can run good at those tracks, as you mentioned, the way that they race, the, the setups that you bring to those tracks, I mean, that's where majority of his wins came were on those types of racetracks. So I think for Grant, he's got to look at that positive and, and carry that momentum. Anything you can find through your season to say, hey, this is our championship, this is our racetrack, you try to find those little nuggets, those are definitely ones that count for Grant. We will hear from Grant later in the show, but we are just talking about Corey Heim, the pole sitter, and right now he is standing by out at the racetrack with Josh. Well, thanks, Caitlin. And you know, Corey Heim makes the first statement of the night of the championship for drivers by winning the poll. How do you now parlay that into a championship tonight? Yeah, we certainly had a fast truck these past few days and practice yesterday. I was super confident about race pace, but kind of a question mark for qualifying and we executed on that as well. So uh, couldn't be happier of where we sit right now. It's just about a going out and executing at this point. But uh, just super thankful for Track on Garage, Toyota Racing and Safe Life for putting me in this position. It's, uh, it's a lot of pressure, but pressure is a privilege, I like to say. So, um, you know, definitely looking forward to it. It's definitely something I'll never forget and hopefully we can go out and get us a championship. And you touched on it there, but I want to talk about the pressure or just the emotions you've been feeling. How have you kept that in check and how has Scott Zipidelli been a part of trying to help you do that as well? Yeah, I've had so much support from so many people that have really gone through this experience before, like Scott, like you said. So I've um, just been leaning on people, kind of understanding what the pressure's like and how to handle it and how to prepare for such a big day for me. I mean, this is the biggest day of my life, really. So um, a lot of pressure, like I said, but just leaning on people who have done it and you know been there and done that uh, is big for me. So um, I feel really ready and I'm prepared and I'm excited. Good start to the night with Corey Harms starting on the pole tonight, Caitlin.
For sure, Josh, that's the best place to be. And, and Josh brings up a good point of Scott Sibidelli, his crew chief, has won a championship before in the truck series with Brett Moffitt. That's going to be a, a strong duo tonight, no question. Absolutely. I think that, you know, Scott has probably was the best crew chief that Corey could have had coming into the season. Scott's experience and understanding how to develop a young driver, which he did with Brett Moffitt, and they went on and won the championship. You know, for Corey, having Scott on the box is invaluable. Uh, I know Scott a long time, and he's a smart guy, and I know he knows how to lead this team. Well, and the similarity there is Brett Moffitt won the, his championship his first full season in the Truck Series. Only three yeah. people have done that in the past, and one of those was Mike Skinner the very first year. So Corey Heim has that in common with Brett Moffitt. I'm sure the demeanor is similar for, for Zipidelli to be working through. Uh, but, you know, as, as a driver going to battle for a championship, Corey's got to be a little careful. Don't do anything too different than what you've done all year. Don't let, you know, too many voices come in and get you worked up, talk Talking about the pressure and what you might experience. Stick to that core group, focus on that, and go out and do your job. Well, you're exactly right. You know, that since coming back at St. Louis, after St. Louis, he's had all those top tens in a row. That just tells you that his maturity behind the wheel is very strong and knows how to get it to the end of the race. Yeah, Corey Heim has not missed a beat and off to a good start already on that yeah. pole position for the race tonight. Now, still to come here on race day, Carson Hosevar, he's been turning heads all season long as he poised to earn his first title tonight. We will hear from him later in the show. Plus, on the flip side, Ben Rhodes, he's chasing his second title in the series. We will get his mindset. He joins race day coming up later on FS1. Welcome back to Championship Weekend with a beautiful look there at the championship logo out at Phoenix Raceway. It's the Craftsman Truck Series season finale. We will know who is the champion later tonight. It could be that guy, Carson Hosevar, starting 13th. And what a year it has been for him so far. Here's a look back at the breakout season for Hosevar leading up to today. Carson Hosevar <laughs> wins for the first time in his career. Carson Hosevar, who wins at Nashville. The hat trick for Carson Hosevar. Yeah! Thank you. His third win of the season comes at Richmond. Not all heroes wear capes. Good drive right there, man. Carson Hosevar gets it done at Homestead Miami Speedway and will race for a championship. Walking tall for Carson, four wins, one in the playoffs for him, 11 top fives and 13 top 10 performances. And right now, Josh is out at the racetrack standing by with Carson to get his mindset for tonight. How's he feeling, Josh? Well, that's the big question, Caitlin. So, Carson, this is your first time in the championship four. You've had all day to think about this, all week to think about it. How are you feeling emotionally heading into this race? Oh, I'm, I'm glad I got to just go drive that cup car. It got my mind off it. I was forced to not think about a truck for at least an hour or so uh, and, and just literally just go drive laps. Um, luckily, my, my legacy guys just were like, hey, you know, it drives pretty good. Just keep going. We know what you got. Um, and I started doing pit roads, and I stopped in my real box a few times. Uh, just try to take advantage of all of it but i mean I'm just racing for a lot of people honestly um you know nice motorsports out nice everybody that gave me this shot you know two or three years ago um you know phil gould you know we, we get a real shot to get after it and, and get a, the big trophy hopefully get to run with al for many years to come and get the trophies in between but um real big shot to, to get the big trophy get it for worldwide express pepper's eyewear um everybody all the friends and family we lost along the way of this journey are on the truck as tribute uh and then they got to let me put the partners that helped me get here gm parts now premier security uh bridger chevrolet and precision fleet image like just everybody that uh helped me they're all on the truck get to get here and um you know hopefully we can get the big trophy how do you feel about your truck ever having time, qualifying time in practice, and about your shot, even though you do qualify outside the top 10? Uh, we weren't very good in practice. <laughs> went, went to the, the hotel lobby, skipped our company dinner for me and Phil to just literally talk. And as one, I ordered every food I could get, stress eating, and he had a laptop and we sat and talked about it. Uh, probably got quarter way there, or about halfway there and qualifying, and I think, um, you know, I got the best crew chief on the box, and, you know, he'll, he'll get me dialed in for the race. It seems to always be that way. Might not be there stage one, stage two, but I'm sure we'll get there at the end. Starting 13th, any superstition with that? Oh, I, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm just going to go like hell and see what happens, honestly. Thanks, and good luck, Carson. Thanks, Caitlin.
<laughs> Thank you, Josh. Good note there. All Friday the 13th is stress eating. I don't think I've ever heard <laughs> a driver mention that. What do you think about his chances for tonight for the big trophy, as he said? I got to tell you, I think they're pretty darn good. You know, every driver in their career has a moment where it just happens. They just figure it out. He won at Texas and had three bad races. The next 14, he averaged fifth is a finishing position with three wins. Wow, he yeah. figured it out. He figured out how to get these things to the end of the race, not making mistakes. Won the last race out at Homestead, so I think his chances tonight are pretty strong. And like he said, he's got a great crew chief on the box with Phil Gould. There you go. What do you say? Well, I think Carson has shown that the lights have come on. Since that win <laughs> in Texas, the when they got that win late in the race with Nick Sanchez and Zane Smith crashing everywhere, Carson Hosovar wins. Well, he goes on to win three more times this season. Uh, but I think the pressure might be getting to him a little bit just from what we've seen so far uh, this weekend. He's the guy that's going cup racing next year. He's yeah. the guy that's won the most races. That team knows this is their championship to lose, much like we've heard Denny Hamlin talk about all year long. So I look at them, and then I look at practice and qualifying. Now, don't count them out because Phil Gold will go to work on this truck and get it dialed in, but they're starting from behind, which is hard to do in a championship race. That interview right there is as nervous as I've ever, ever. seen Carson right. Hosovar, yeah. ever. Yeah, so that, that definitely is the case. Well, what a year he's had. Been so impressive totally. in yeah. trucks and the Cup Series. Now, let's take a look at one of his biggest competitors, the young favorites. So that would be Corey Heim versus Carson. Corey, one year older than Carson. Well, Carson leads in the win categories, and you see the average finish in top fives are very similar numbers. So it begs the question, who is the stronger of the two? Who's, who's got the edge when it comes to the CHs? <laughs> what do you say? Look, coming into this weekend, you cannot argue with those stats, those last 14 races of Carson Hosovar. But we have one weekend. It doesn't matter what you've done the last 14 weekends. It's about Phoenix right now, what you can do here. And so far, Corey Heim has shown that they have the speed. And I think he has a little bit more poise right now. Um, you know, we didn't know. We don't know how somebody's going to react until they get here. And right now what we're seeing, I, I just give that nod to Corey Heim and their execution so far this weekend. Well, as nervous as we just saw Carson and started 17th, I'm going to put all that behind because they won the last race. They've been strong every race in the playoffs. Phil Gould is one of the best at adjusting the trucks, like Carson said. So even though you see all that, I got to give just a little bit of a nod to Carson because of that last win. Okay. Or just so. because I took Corey. Because you took Corey. <laughs> yeah, right. You guys can't agree on the final <laughs> but, show. But that I, would be no fun, right? Honestly, <laughs> though, with those stats, how do you pick one? Right. It's true. Very close battle between the two of them when it comes to the numbers they've posted this season. Still to come here on race day, Ben Rhodes. He's a past champion in the truck series. He's laughing, having a good time. He seems pretty relaxed, guys. He is going to be joining the show from Phoenix coming up later. Stay with us on FS1. Welcome back to Championship Weekend out there at Phoenix Raceway. A little over 27 minutes to the command for this season finale race and to crown a champion. It is going to be exciting. Now, the defending champion in the series, that driver right there, Zane Smith, he missed the championship four for the first time in his truck series career, but he will start fourth and he will certainly be a force to be reckoned with when it comes to this victory. We're going to miss him because he's moving up to the Cup Series next season. What do you make of the season Zane Smith had? Well, they started out exactly like we expected. They went to Daytona the first race and they won. Then a few weeks later at Coda, they went out and they won on the road course. And I thought this was going to be another repeat year where he's battling for that championship. The difference in this year and last year, though, is he had 10 finishes outside the top 20 or 20th or worse versus only three last year. Those big moment races where he got taken out. You look at the last round, the, the round of eight. He had three finishes of 24th or worse. And you just can't do that and run for a championship. But they have had speed. They could go win tonight. Absolutely. This this is one of his best racetracks, right? Second, second, and first the last three years, and they're fast again tonight. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he becomes the spoiler and wins this race tonight. We'll have to keep an eye on the past champion of Zane Smith, and we're also going to keep an eye on another past champion, and I want to flash back to 2021 when it was Ben Rhodes who was able to get the job done, able to get the title for the first time in his truck series career, and I might add it was followed by one of the best press conferences ever after he won that event and got the title that year. Now take a look at this. The best average finish and the wins through the season for our championship four. Corey Heim, he leads the group at a 6.2 with three wins. Ben Rhodes, he is the lowest of the four at 11.0 with one win that came a while ago out at Charlotte Motor Speedway. So right now let's join Josh who's standing by with Ben at the track. 
Well, thanks, Caitlin. And you know, for the third year in a row, you're in the championship four. You won it in 21. How different are the emotions this time around, being that you've been there, done that? Uh, more relaxed, I think. Um, really, the whole day's been more relaxed. It's been more business as usual, another race. And of course, it's the final one of the season. So um, I don't know. We're just trying to chill and just be happy that we're here. It's been a really long season to get to this point. So you have to appreciate and be grateful for the opportunity when it's here. Three years in a row kind of makes it feel normal. So I think that's why I feel that way, but it's not, right? I, I still have to appreciate it and recognize that it's hard to do. It is a rare feat to be in three years in a row. And yeah, we got a chance to race for a championship tonight, but there's still 150 laps left. How are you feeling about the truck and what you got and your chances? And are we going to see any rabbits out of a hat like we've seen from Rich of the past? <laughs> I hope we're just fast straight up. Uh, you know, I'd rather not do that. It puts a lot of stress on me when I have two tires versus four, or no tires versus four. It just gets really difficult and really stressful. But I'm actually mad about qualifying. I felt like I left some on the racetrack, particularly on entry of uh, one and, and also entry of three. I think I cut the dog leg a little too short. Uh, and that kind of hurt my entry speed. And then I got a little loose on the exit too. Anyways, I'm rambling. It was uh, not the best lap. So I think we're better than a sixth place truck. Uh, I think our F-150 will make a march to the front, hopefully on a long run. I feel like that's where our strength is at. Ben Rhodes looking for his second title in the last three years, Caitlin. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, he will certainly be hoping to uh, achieve that feat. Some elite company, yourself included, with the multi-titles in the truck series. No surprise, he's very relaxed going into this race. Yeah, you know, I think he's probably the most relaxed out of all the four of them. And I, I think there's one reason for it. And this is kind of hard to believe, but I think he goes into this race as the underdog. I right? agree. He doesn't have the stats to back it up to be a fast truck. You know, 11th position average, that's not very good, although Carson is only a little bit better than that. But he's only won one race, right? Uh, they snuck into the second round. Now they won their way, got their way into the third round in the championship four. Uh, I just think that he's in a position where he can go out and just let it hang out because it's not really, he's the underdog. Yeah, I totally agree. That yeah, takes some of the pressure off. Yeah. But, you know, we showed those results from the last three seasons. And the crazy thing is, is he finished third here in 2021 and won the championship. Yeah. Then last year he finishes second and doesn't win. He finishes yeah. second in the championship. So I think if you're going to win this championship tonight, you're going to have to win the race. That's something Ben hasn't done here, but it is something that he and Rich can figure out. Uh, you know, I agree, though. Underdog in this championship fight, but they're still here. Yep, well, you guys both reference his career. Crew Chief Rich. So take a look at this. Ben's right-hand man. These are some great numbers with Crew Chief Rich Lucius. The numbers tell the impressive story. No doubt about it. Here they are. 48 starts, 10 wins, and 18 top fives. And that does include the 2021 title. So how is Rich feeling ahead of calling the shots on the box for the championship race? Josh is with him at the track. Well, thanks, Caitlin and Rich. I think the big question going into this race is how are you feeling overall as a team? And can we expect to see any rabbits pulled out of a hat later on in the race or what? Um, I feel pretty confident in what we got. We're pretty happy with the truck. Qualifying six, same place we did last year. Uh, ben thinks the truck's better than it was last year, so we're seeing uh, no rabbits yet, but we never, you never know, right? I know the last time you won a championship, you did a shoey, so we'll see if they hold you to that again if you get it done the second time around. Caitlin? <laughs> Got to try and do the old shoey if you get the big victory <laughs> there. What do you say, though, about this pairing? Because they're pretty pretty dangerous. It's, it's a good pairing. You know, Ben's had a rough year, right? He started off with Jared Prince. They get their win at Charlotte, and then that Monday, he gets a new crew chief. <laughs> so, you know, then they go along with him and then decided when Haley did make the playoffs, let's put Rich back with Ben. We know that combination works, and it paid off. A seventh and two seconds got him in a championship four. When you have a crew chief and you have that kind of relationship, you got to keep them together. It's a special thing. I had it with Mike Hillman Jr. over at Jermaine Racing. When you know, when the crew chief understands what the driver needs, just by the tone of his voice, that's a special thing. And that's the kind of relationship that they have, that kind of understanding. So definitely keep those guys together, and hopefully they can get another championship tonight. There's no question that that duo is very strong. We'll have to see if they can't get another title together tonight. But after tonight, it's Sunday. And on Fox, it's one of the biggest games of the year. Dallas versus Philly. Dak versus Jalen in America's Game of the Week. It's the next chapter in this historic rivalry. It kicks off Sunday at 4 Eastern on Fox. You don't want to miss it.
And still to come here on race day, one driver who's chasing his first title in the truck series would be that one, Grant Enfinger. He's been racing in the series a long time, but still hoping to add that accolade to his resume. He'll be joining us later in the show. One night, one race, one goal. I will do whatever it takes to become a, a champion. champion. It's time for Phoenix. Let's win another one. This is my chance. I won't back down. Let's, Let's do, do this. this. That is four determined drivers to go after one goal to get the trophy. It's championship weekend out at Phoenix Raceway for the Craftsman Truck Series. And we're getting closer and closer to racing and finding out who will earn that title for this season. One driver who hopes it's him is Grant Enfinger. Take a look at this. Wish granted. He has three wins on the year, 12 top tens, and a 9.1 average finish. This is his second championship for appearance. To hear how he's feeling going into the race tonight, we join Josh, who's standing by with Grant at the track. Well, Caitlin, I'd say Grant Enfinger, you got your work cut out for you a little bit tonight. Get, didn't get the starting position you want, so what's it going to take to get yourself into contention by the end of the night? Uh, we just need a good handling truck now. Um, honestly, like, Hensley's, Hensley's fired up. He's, he's upset with qualifying. I am, too. Um, but I was happy it was just tight. Yesterday, I felt like just just wasn't in the track over there in turns three and four. I feel like now, if we can get the balance right, I feel like we, we can drive our champion power equipment Chevy to the front. We know at the end of the year, obviously, at the end of this race, GMS shutting down. How much have you guys used this as a rallying cry to uh, end with something special? Yeah, obviously, it's a bittersweet uh, GMS race, and Mike, Mike Beam, Maury Gallagher, everybody has done so much for, for not just me and my career, but a, a lot of these guys and, and a lot of the, the, the Craftsman Truck Series owes a lot to GMS racing. So it's obviously uh, disappointing to, to see it go after uh, 150 more laps. But, uh, but, yeah, I think everybody, everybody on this team is a little extra motivated uh, to, to bring this championship home for them. So I feel like after the news got out, we were able to, uh, to, to kind of put everything to bed. That, that We weren't giving up, um, and we won't tonight either. Well, Grant's won a championship for GMS in the ARCA series, looking to add one on the truck side. Caitlin? Thank you, Josh. That's a great point there. And, you know, they never let the closure derail their efforts at all. And Grant very much could have a shot at this title. He could. And, and when you know your team is going to be dismantled at the end of the season because it's closing, you wonder, are my people going to lose focus? Are they going to start looking for other jobs? But this group has, as you said, stayed focused, stayed on task, and now they're here battling together. Now, Jeff and, and Grant, they've worked together before, and now they're working together at GMS, so who knows if they'll just move on around the garage together. But <laughs> either way, this group and this pairing, they've done so much together. You look at those wins that he's had this year, three wins, uh, and, and we really didn't know, are they going to be a threat for a championship? But they're here now. The thing that I like about Grant is, you know, we, we've watched him. I think this year has been probably his best year in his career, but he, he's become a driver that, you know, you look at those veteran drivers, right, and you look at how they race every week, week in and week out, and Grant is that guy, steady, never tearing stuff up. He takes what the truck's going to give him. By the end of the race, his communication with Jeff Hensley, they've worked on a truck, and he's quietly gotten up to the front and gotten three wins. Mm -hmm. So he deserves to be here. Jeff deserves to be here. It'd be pretty cool to see them take GMS right. to another championship on the way out. Yeah, what a great way to close out GMS's time in the truck series with a title this season. Now, for more insight on the race today, we join the voices in the booth, and we say hello once again to Jamie Little, Bill Parsons, and Michael Waltrip. And what do you guys think about the veterans versus the youth tonight for this title. Yeah, it's a great discussion. I mean, when you look at the Craftsman Truck Series, that's really what it's all about, showcasing the future stars of NASCAR. And I love the debate, and I love when you look at our Ford tonight. But two that stand out, and you guys have been talking about them all night, Carson Hosevar and Corey Heim. So, Michael, I'm going to start with you first. What do you think of Carson Hosevar's chances tonight? Well, I really like where Corey Heim is right now. But look at Carson. He's had a great season. What sticks out most to me, though, in the last 10 races, three wins. You know how important it is in sports still to heat up when playoffs come around. He's hot. He's running really well. He's obviously in a really good place mentally. 
He's going to skip the Xfinity Series and go right to Cup. That means a lot of people believe in this young man, and I believe in, in him as well. But I'm just a little bit worried about his practice speed and qualifying. You got a guy that's on the pole that you like. Yeah, Corey Heim has done an amazing job this year. The last 15 races, all top 10 finishes. The youngest driver ever to do that. And he leads in every statistical category this year in the Truck Series, except wins. And Carson Hosevar has that. But top fives, top tens. Average running finishing position, lap sled. He is really getting it done. As you mentioned, he's on the pole. Everyone in the garage area talked about how good his truck was in practice. Obviously good in qualifying. He's going to be good tonight, too. Corey Heim certainly one to watch tonight. Well, we'll have it all covered up coming up at the top of the hour. The Craftsman 150 coming at you. Caitlin. Thank you, Jamie. Great insight there. We look forward to hearing you all call the action for the event tonight. Now, here's a look at the front end of the starting grid for tonight. And as mentioned, playoff contender Corey Heim. He is on the pole alongside him this time. Jeski, the second row, sees Nick Sanchez, who qualified inside the top five for the 13th time this year. The 2022 champion, Zane Smith, will close out his truck series career from a fourth place start. And the only other playoff driver starting inside the top eight is Ben Rhodes. Ben looking to join some elite companies by becoming a multiple time series champion and we're getting closer and closer to racing out there at Phoenix Raceway and we know the intensity is starting to ramp up and here they are the champ four on the stage this is a cool moment I saw four drivers in that top eight that wish they were still up there with these guys all right we're gonna give our race picks coming up next Teams won championship, ready to battle for it. I'm a dangerous man. The man that won the title two years ago, championship eligible again. Ben Rose. Good work right there, buddy. Checker flag in the air. Fred F. Finger wins it. They're going to have trouble dealing with that 23 trap. The hat trick for Carson Hosevar. <laughs> We crown the regular season champion, Corey Heim. It's time, baby. We'll see which one of those drivers can win the championship tonight. I'm a dangerous man. How good is that? Wow. Who is the most dangerous? That's a million dollar question. It could be Carson Hosevar. He is going for the championship tonight, starting 13th. Had a breakout season, hoping to cap it off with a title. That driver, Ben Rhodes, already has a championship to his credit. He is starting sixth for the race tonight. And speaking of multiple championships, here's drivers with several in the series. And of course, you see our own Todd Budine there, who got it done twice. So does Ben have what it takes and how hard is it to do that to get multiple titles? It's it's tough. I'll tell you what, but I, I really think that Ben and Rich Lucius together have the opportunity. It's right in front of them and they're coming in here as the underdog. So there's less pressure. Just go out and race. Do what you know how to do. And they heated up at the right time. A seventh, a second, a second. This yeah. is their good time right now. He kept it pretty simple there. Made it sound simple to win that. <laughs> Easy that enough. Nice. Do it. Just, just do it. I don't no, even do have one, you know Todd. So. <laughs> hey, we didn't want to bring that up. Okay. <laughs> right. It is time now for our championship picks. Who we believe can get the Woo! title tonight in Phoenix. And Todd, you, you got the honor. You got to live go with this first, all offseason, Todd. So no uh, pressure. Hey, look, yeah, no pressure. I love the say? underdog. I okay. love the underdog. I believe in Ben Rhodes. I believe in wow. Richard Lucius. I'm going to say that Ben is going to join that list and stand right beside me as a two-time champion. All there right. you go, Ben Rhodes. I like that pick. Trevor, what do you say to that? Hey, this is before practice and qualifying that we made these picks, guys. But <laughs> Corey Heim is my pick, and I love seeing him be on the pole because he's got speed in yeah. that truck. I think he's going to win the race, win the championship. You know, for the final show of the year, you and I are going to agree. Hey! hey what about that time. Corey Heim? I think uh, he does get the championship. <laughs> we see a, a new champion tonight in Phoenix. Hey, these are three uh, almost made it the whole show without that happening. Without him taking me out. Yeah, yeah knock him out of the way again. <laughs> All right, we're getting closer and closer to racing out there in Phoenix. So now we have to head out to the racetrack for the pre-race ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hat as the Avondale Police and Fire Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer today's invocation, please welcome 161st Air Refueling Wing Chaplain, Adam Rowe. Let us pray. Gracious God, we gather here this evening with a shared passion for racing. We're grateful for the talent and determination of the drivers, the skill and diligence of the crews, and the enthusiasm and camaraderie of the fans. 
We ask for your protection over everyone present on and off the track. May the competition be fierce but fair, embodying the spirit of sportsmanship. As engines roar to life, may we remember the still small whisper of your presence among us, guiding, protecting, and inspiring. In your precious name we pray, amen. And now to perform our national anthem, please welcome content creator, singer, and actress, Angelica Torres. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land It is time to find out who our champion will be. Where are the nerves at, you think, for these champ four? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Through the roof. <laughs> Through the roof. It is an exciting moment for all these teams, no doubt about it. For Todd, Trevor, and myself, that does it for us on this edition of Race Day. Time now to join the voices in the booth once again, and we say hello to Jamie Little. Thank you, Caitlin, and we welcome you to Phoenix, Arizona on an absolutely gorgeous night under the lights. It's the Craftsman 150, and tonight we will crown a champion. Four contenders, one race, the best finisher will capture the title. And tonight we have three pit reporters covering all the action. Let's kick things off and say hello to Regan Smith. Well, good evening, Jamie. Corey Heim, our championship leader all season long, has been the most consistent truck that we have had. As a matter of fact, he is rolling in on a 15 race top 10 streak. Things have been going perfect for him, and that is no different this week. And this truck unloaded very good, minimal changes to his race truck. They feel great about it, and they backed it up by putting this troll truck on the pole earlier this afternoon. Things are looking very good for him right now. Switching gears over to Carson Hosevar in the 42 truck. Again, one of these guys coming in, four wins this season. Everything has been smooth for him him as things have been going along but this weekend a little bit more of a challenge for Carson the truck very tight in practice they couldn't get a handle on it quite like they wanted to they had to work all night long substantial changes prior to qualifying to the truck he qualified 13th but he feels much better about where it felt in qualifying for what he's about to do this evening Josh Sims well Regan this may be the biggest race of the year you wouldn't know it spending time around Ben Rhodes and the 99 team today they were relaxed they were calm and that confidence Ben told me comes from the fact that they've been here before they've won a title this is their third straight year being a member of the championship four he said this day feels a lot like the day from two years ago where they came home with their first title he said the only difference a little bit of a different setup for this truck but he said the pressure is not on us we are the dark horses people don't expect us to win so why not go out there back it up and do it again amanda Josh riding along with Grant Infinger on his dash is a quote that says all things are possible for one who believes. When I asked Grant Infinger why he believes in himself in this championship, he said we want it more than the others and we deserve it. The 23 is going to start 17th on track tonight. That's the last of the championship for drivers. And apropos to Grant's season, he said I wouldn't want it any other way. Jamie. 
Thank you, Amanda. Looking forward to hearing reports from you three all night long. And you know, guys, nine months it has been since we dropped the green flag at Daytona. 22 races later, it all culminates tonight. We welcome you in. I'm Jamie Little, Phil Parsons, and Michael Waltrip. And it's been so much fun looking at this lineup. The championship four. I think it's safe to say Corey Heim is the favorite. So, Michael. How do you beat him if you're one of those other three contenders? Well, first of all, I am so happy. It's championship night. We're going to crown a NASCAR champion tonight. That can be life changing. Everybody's asking, how do you beat Corey Heim? Phil told you the numbers. It's been amazing. 15 straight top 10 finishers for that young man. But Phil, I don't think a top 10 finish will do it tonight. You're going to have to go out there and be in that top two or three, maybe even win the race. Numbers are amazing for this kid. He's sitting on the pole. The last two Phoenix winners here have won from the pole. So he was the favorite before he got the pole. How are you going to beat him tonight? You might have to throw a Hail Mary late, and we've seen that done here before. Yeah, and it may be possible because of the stature of this race, the championship race, NASCAR has allowed these teams to have an extra set of tires. So they will have five sets of tires for this race. We've seen this happen. We've seen people put on tires late in the race. Let's go back to 2020. Sheldon Creed on a green-white checker comes and puts tires on. He restarts with two laps to go in ninth. And watch him go way underneath the racing surface. He's going to come off turn two in the third position. Then he goes down the other end of the racetrack and grabs the lead. One lap it took him to go from ninth to the lead and the win and the championship back in 2020 for GMS. They're going to have a throwback paint scheme on Daniel Dye's truck to honor this truck right here of Sheldon Creed in this championship. And guys, remember last year, Zane Smith. 10 laps to go. He restarts 13th. Same situation with four fresh tires. He drives to the lead inside of those 10 laps and goes on to get that win and the championship. It can be done. They have the tires to do it. We may see a Hail Mary work again. And the reason why it can be done and the Hail Mary be thrown because of this racetrack. Did you see how they were going so low in the turns? They're going to run off the front straightaway down low. They're going to be off the road in turns one and two. We're going to see tremendous action tonight. I can't wait to get the green flag and get this action going. I love those recaps of the last championship races it's all about the restarts did you see that four and five wide and you can only imagine right now ben rhodes he seems co cool calm and collected he's been <laughs> in this situation before but Corey heim right there his first championship four appearance we don't see a whole lot of emotion i think he's got it now well this garage opened 10 hours ago these guys are ready to hear those words let's go trackside to fire engines phoenix raceway this is a moment you have all been waiting for are you ready to get the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Championship race started? Here to give the command of fire engines is Ace Hardware representative Julia Butchkowski. Take it away, Julie. Drivers, start your engines. There you have it. One final time, engines have been fired for 2023. We may not know the outcome, but one thing is true. We will have a thriller in the desert. We'll drop the green flag next. The sun is down. The heat will continue to rise. These championship four drivers are ready to do battle. driver can win it all or will someone new seize the opportunity for a chance to be etched in history tonight it doesn't matter about points or stage finishes we race for one thing only a championship welcome to phoenix only on fs1 Welcome back to Phoenix Raceway. It's championship weekend, and tonight the Craftsman Truck Series takes center stage. Earlier today, qualifying took place, and the fastest man was right there, Corey Heim in the number 11. Two contenders inside the top 10, two outside. And that brings us to the Craftsman starting lineup. Corey Heim starting on pole. Ty Majeski had a hot rod as well, starting just outside row number one. 
A couple really fast trucks back in row number two, Nick Sanchez and our champion from last year, Zane Smith. What about 2021 champion Ben Rhodes? He's going to roll from the sixth position. They got a really fast forward. Watch for Ben to be tough tonight. Great qualifying effort for Jack Wood and Christian Negus narrowly avoided making the final four. Grant Enfinger going to roll off in the 17th position. Got a little work to do. Let's see if we can get a word with Grant. His line's busy. Here we go. Grant Enfinger, it's Waltrip and the crew at Fox. Do you copy? I got you, Mikey. Well, it's been fun following you all year long. A championship is in your grasp. How do you feel, and what do you think it's going to take to win this race tonight? I mean, for us, we're going to have to go from the back to the front, right? We qualified mid-pack. Um, I know Hensley's not, not thrilled about that, but I was honestly happy that it was it was tight in, uh, in qualifying, and it was just tight. Yesterday, I think, I think the truck was driving me a little bit, but now we get this balance right. I, I have all the confidence in the world we're going to drive this champion power equipment Chevy to the front. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we got to work it out for us, but we can do it for sure. I appreciate you all year long, buddy. You've been a lot of fun, a lot of help. Congratulations on the new baby. Go get you a championship. Thank you, my friend. Enjoy the show. We're going to put one on for you. <laughs> I love that. Let's look at our Craftsman track description that these truckers will be trying to conquer tonight. This place is so much fun to race. It's a mile in length. And you can see every every aspect of the corners are different. One and two is is very sweeping and wide. The banking is the same, but you go down to turn three and four and it's really, really tight. So it's just so dramatically different. You have to be versatile. You have to have a truck that'll run high, run low, run all over the place. Let's take a look at our race analysis. You see this race is 150 laps, 150 miles. First two stages, everyone's going to stop at the end of the stage and put tires on. That final stage is when it really matters. You know you're not going to have to have fuel, but we saw what two new tires will do late in a run. So look for that to happen again in that final stage. And then all night long, if the caution comes out just before the stage ends, you're going to see some differing strategies. It's going to be a fun night. Remember, for those championship four, stage points don't matter tonight. That's right. A lot to stay on top of tonight. Let's get final thoughts before we go green with our pit reporters. We'll kick it off with Regan once again. Well, Jamie, Zane Smith's tenure with Front Row Racing is coming to an end after this race as he moves to the Cup Series. But he told me earlier today he wants it to end exactly how it began at Daytona one year ago with a win. This truck has been good all weekend long. He told me this team is special. They've got chemistry unlike anything he's ever witnessed in this sport to this point of his career. It has been a true pleasure to work with each of them for the past two seasons. And as the truck, as we talk of the truck itself, very good this weekend. He said it compares to the one that he won with one year ago here in Phoenix, Amanda. Regan eliminated from the championship at Homestead. Christian Eckes personally went by the shop to remove the red spoiler from his truck. He said that it was a motivating experience of reflection that has left him with one final goal this season, and that is a win. Josh? Well, this time last year, Ty Majeski and the 98 team were a member of the championship for competing for a title, but a bad second round this time around, and the suspension of crew chief Joe Shear Jr. cost them a shot to get back and compete once again. Well, I talked to Ty earlier. He said, yes, it was frustrating. Of course, they had a very bad second round, but he said that doesn't mean we had a bad season. He said we learned a lot. We grew. We showed we can win anywhere and we can be consistent. And by the way, they qualified second, widely believed to have a truck good enough to win this race. He said, hey, let's go out and spoil things, guys. Ty Majeski certainly one to watch tonight. Well, we're happy to bring you four on boards tonight. We'll be riding along with all four championship contenders, Michael. Check out those eyes, too. They're wide open. They're ready to attack. Grant Enfinger rolling from the 17th position. We're going to be on board with him as he shifts it up into third gear and rolls around. We're also going to ride along with Carson Hosovar. This is the Worldwide Express Chevrolet. He's won four times this year, looking for one more win, and he's going to start from the 13th spot. It's taken me all week to get here, Phil. This is my championship pick, Ben Rhodes. He's qualified in the sixth position, loved his truck last night in practice, talked to his crew chief, Rick Shlu Rich Lucius, and he's confident about what they have. And if you need a gamble, you need that Hail Mary late in the race. He'll do it. He's the guy. And how about our pole sitter, Corey Heim? Just about every statistical category he's led this year. This is a safe light Toyota looking for one more win. And this is what was said on the radio just a moment ago. All right, buddy, you have some fun tonight, okay? Try to stay a little bit loose, stay focused. Under uh, 
all day long, no matter what happens, need you to stay calm, stay focused, and we'll work through any adversity we need to. Love to hear the pep talks on the radio, especially for young Corey Heim, the 21-year-old. His first championship four appearance, his first full-time season in the Craftsman Truck Series. He'll lead this field to green. Ty Majeski on the outside, Nick Sanchez and Zane Smith, the first two rows. Side by side, eyes on the green flag. It's up in the air. We are racing at Phoenix. A little contact back in the field. They fan out four wide to the inside. Here comes Nick Sanchez. Corey Heim to the middle, and it looks like it's going to be the 98. Ty Majeski. Majeski around the outside. I talked about how many grooves there are here and how you have to be so versatile. You can see, oh, Nick Sanchez slips, gets into the side of Zane Smith. A lot of action early on this first lap. Are they going to be four wide? Three at least, for sure. It didn't take us long to get three and four wide. Look at them all the way down to the bottom. Chase Purdy, the four truck. You see all the sparks. You guys talk about the risk versus reward when you cut that dog leg. You're going to cut it all night long. There's just speed down there. If you come off the corner with a little bit more momentum than the guy ahead of you, you're going to dive low and get that spot. You see the gold highlighted in the pylon. Those are our four championship contenders. How about Rajat Karutha, 24 truck, making a move around the outside of Jake Garcia in the 35. Chase Purdy in the four, good qualifying effort. He's down really low on the track, but not as low as Gray in that 17 truck. He's able to make a move low. Got a couple of teenagers back there. The one of Jesse Love just wrapped up the Arkham Menards Series Championship a couple of weeks ago. This is his swan song with Team Toyota. He's moving on. You see him right there in the one truck. No stranger to racing with that 17 truck of Taylor Gray either. Grant's kind of struggling. The start didn't go like we talked about the 17th position. He's dropped back to 19. We'll have to see if he can get through this field. Man, Bill, early in the going when you're that deep in the pack, if you don't make a big move on the restart, it's tough sledding after that. It's so much harder to pass him as you see. Oh, oh contact. Stuart Friesen is around. That'll bring out our first caution of the night. Great job by Haley Deegan. Sometimes you just got to lock her down and avoid the contact. Don't try to dodge them. And she did just that. I think she flat spotted her tires, but what an amazing job she did of not running into to Friesen in that 52. That was a 77 of Derek Krause that got into Stuart Friesen. He got and turned him around. He got loose getting down in the corner, corrected it, and ran into Stuart. You talked about that extra set of tires because we're the championship four. Well, these guys need these tires right now. Watch the big slide by Stewie. Bam. You see the 77 got loose, had to chase it up the hill. Nowhere for Stewart to go. And what an amazing job, as you mentioned, Haley Deegan did. <laughs> All four tires locked up. That's just fun to see when a driver does something special. She was hooked together with another truck to her inside. But man, pit boss stayed out of the 52 truck. I bet Grant and Finger on board right here. Woo! A little too close for comfort, boys. I told him about making big moves early. Well, that's, well, that's how two you spots. Well, there you go. <laughs> Look at Grant's helmet. He gets an A for effort there. Looking good. Needs the truck to be a little bit better. Grant and Finger back in 16th. Six laps in. Ty Majeski leads Corey Hyman and Phoenix. Uh, started really free, turned it a little bit tight there. Um, ended maybe one number free all the way through, maybe two numbers free on entry. We're tight, but we're much better than we were yesterday. Yeah, we have grip, we're just tight, um, but way better. Uh, strong suit one and two, weak spot three and four. I don't know what I need, three and four, just not there, the grip there, great. It's like I'm out of the range, range just a touch, three and four. Boost off the wall all the way through the corner and exit. Really have to unwind the wheel and take it to the wall. All right, so thoughts from our four championship contenders. Uh, it sounds to me like they all went a little bit better. Well, uh, first of all, that's awesome TV. We, we've run enough laps for these guys to have a good feel for what they got. Bill, would you rather be a little tight right now or a little bit free? You think these things will trend tighter as the race goes on? I think they might trend a little bit tighter. Jeff Hensley with his eye on the prize. And I love how Grant Enbinger really thinks this truck's pretty good. Right now running in the 16th spot. He's gained one position since the start of the race. 
Carson Hosovar up one spot, but Ben Rhodes has gained three spots running in the third spot. Yeah, he was very, very confident when I spoke to him earlier today about that truck. But I'm like you guys. I love what Grant was saying. We got we got something we can race him with. And he's back in traffic. That is even more impressive that he likes the way it feels with all those trucks around him. Michael, we had fun calling the start of the race. Here we go for our first restart of the night. Watch how quickly they fan out. Corey Heim, Ty Majeski once again lead him for the restart. Ben Rhodes right up the middle. Well, Ben Rhodes was a hair quick on jumping to the middle of that battle now we're looking up three wide for the lead nascar's real quick to call that lately if you try to jump the start we saw it in miami ben was in a bit of a in a hurry there well hopefully he kept it in line before he got to the start finish line yeah you have to stay in line till you get to start finish line you also can't lay back to try to get a little bit of a run on people either and nascar told us today as a matter of fact that the rules are the same tonight and they're keeping an eye on those restarts just like they have in the previous weeks where we've seen a lot of penalties Look at that craziness. You saw the sparks. That's those trucks bottoming off the road when they go down off the track. Getting the word from NASCAR, the start was clean. I'm so happy to hear Me that. Me too. Me too. So well done by Ben Rhodes, right? <laughs> Quick reaction. That 38 truck, talk in the garage area, maybe the fastest truck in the long run. We'll see if he can battle his way through this pack and get up and contend for the lead. Look how far away those trucks on the outside are when Hosevar drips, drops down all the way to the bottom. And they all want the same space when they get to the turn. That's what makes it so crazy. Look at that spread out in the corner. Carson not even using the racetrack. 19 truck there, the Napa Auto Care truck for Christian Eckes. He was good in practice as well. Talk about Zane Smith, of course. Defending series champion and today that rain comes to an end and he doesn't have a shot at defending it But it's been uh, one of those emotional days as we know he's moving on to cup next year skipping over the Xfinity series So he's been taking it all in today Look at Grant and Finger creeping in on Carson and they're tight there as Raja exit turn two Grant sees an opportunity to dive in and takes advantage of it. Yeah, it's stalled out Raja's momentum just enough for Grant to get a run on him Grants up to the 11th spot into the top 10 now with that pass. On the bumper of Carson Hosevar, and you mentioned it, Grant Enfinger sounded the happiest of the four with his truck, and we're seeing him make moves now. Right on the tailgate of that 42 truck of Hosevar. How about Christian Eckes in the 19? What a season he has had. He put together some great runs, especially in the playoffs. It's been heartbreak for him the last few weeks, just mistakes, a couple of penalties. But we know the speed has been there for that team. Yeah, we talk a lot about our championship four, but we could have easily been talking about Christian Eckes, maybe Nick Sanchez being in his championship four. I think this year was the hardest for me to pick four. Well, and Tom Ajeski to that list. Totally. I mean, he would have been there as well. It's so difficult. Such a competitive season so funny we had a video we asked all of the championship contenders when we started the playoffs who's your championship for nobody got it right not even close I think Corey Heim picked himself and got the other three completely wrong and he had good picks too he had really good picks this year was especially hard and who had Ben Rhodes I mean the streak that he had of at bad races who had him going to the championship for he got back together with rich lucius the crew chief by the way that he won the championship with just two years ago and they've just made it happen you did not have a top 15 finish in the round of 10 and in the round of eight he finishes seventh second and second and now here they are with a shot at winning their second championship together and I don't know about you guys, but I, I would love to see a post-race interview with Ben Rhodes like we saw a couple years ago. It goes down in the history books. I'm glad we have it on video so he's able to see it. I think uh, he said the word libations. It had something to do with that. They were good. Great. They were good. <laughs> yes, it was. Ben Rhodes running third right now. Corey Heim just ahead of him. Remember, Corey Heim has the... The 98 of Majeski out ahead of him, but he's not worried about Majeski right now. He's not racing him for a championship as we watch Zane Smith try to grab a spot. Down on the inside, making that move, put him up in the top five around Purdy in that four truck. Chase Purdy with 
some good runs he's been putting together the last few weeks. And that reminds me, this is the last race for Kyle Busch Motorsports as we know it. He sold the team a couple of months ago. They made that announcement. They're moving over to Spire. But just want to say, you know, hats off to Kyle Busch, what he's meant to the truck series, what he's meant to the drivers, the future stars of the sport, 100 wins. Uh, over 50 different drivers, two of the four championship contenders on Sunday drove for Kyle Busch. So, Kyle, thanks for all that you've done. What about Matt Crafton? We talked about him in qualifying, having a struggle. He said he liked his truck in the long run. He's all the way up. He's advanced several positions into 16th position, passing trucks on, these, uh, on the start and the restart. Fast truck right now for Matt. Matt Crafton up 10 spots, and he had the best interview earlier. He said, at my age of 47, I'm a nicer Matt. I'm just going to try <laughs> a nicer side. Let's give a shout out too to that 25 truck of Stephen Parsons. He had to go to the rear. He's gained 11 spots driving through the field in that 25. That's a backup truck, had a flat tire or something fell in the right front suspension last night in practice, had to change trucks and uh, doing a nice job early. Phil, that's your son, if you don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I do. So much. I uh, really appreciate Rackley Roofing and folks for letting Stefan drive that truck. 21 races in, 21 laps in, 20, 129 laps to go. And welcome back to the Craftsman 150 as Ty Majeski continues to lead. He's led them all so far, 26 laps and counting. Let's now get an update on our championship four. Here's Regan. Well, JB, you heard Corey Hyams say earlier on in the race that his truck was too loose in the center of the corner, too loose in as well. Now it has transitioned to too loose off of the corner. Crew Chief Scott Zipidelli told him earlier, I feel like the track is going to come to us, stick with it. He's been working with his driver adjustment tools inside the truck, meaning the fans and different things he can do to adjust that truck to help make it better. Josh? I touched on it off the top of the race that Ben Rhodes came with a different setup for that truck than he had the last two years here. Despite being able to win the title with that setup and finish runner-up, they felt like they needed something different to contend this year. Well, right now, he's pretty happy with that truck. His biggest complaint, he needs more lateral grip, but the team told him the track will come to him. Well, Carson, Carson Hosebar mentioning in the tightness of that truck, causing him to not get to the bottom of the line, finish the corner off the way that he wants to since the restart after the most recent caution, though. Quiet on the radio, all good from Carson right now as he tries to work his way up through the pack. Amanda? Well, looky there, Regan Grant Inkfinger has broken into the top ten, currently running in ninth. As we've gotten in some of these green, green flag laps, he is relaying to Jeff Hensley that the truck is starting to feel tight. They will make those adjustments at the pit stop, but Grant told me earlier today that one of the secret weapons he has is the tenure with that man right there, Jeff Hensley. He said they speak the same language. Thank you, Amanda. They absolutely do. They just have this dynamic, this chemistry together. And that man, Jeff Hensley, has been around for so long, won the 1990 Xfinity Championship with Chuck Brown. He's been in the truck series since 04. And to have another shot at it tonight with Grant Enfinger is pretty special. Remember, they weren't together at the beginning of last year. But when they got back together, when Jeff came back to GMS, all of a sudden, the, the results got better and better. And think about where he's won this year. He won at Milwaukee. That's a track that's flat. It's a mile in length. Kind of reminds you a little bit of this place. He also won at Gateway. So he's got a lot of speed on the intermediate tracks, the flatter tracks. I think this team will be something, someone you're going to have to beat before this is over. He's got a good truck. He likes his truck. We'll see how it goes. 15 laps to go in stage number one. Once again, we'll have stage breaks at 45, lap 90, and 150 will end the race, as long as we don't have an overtime. It's a battle for thirds. Zane Smith has caught the 99 of Ben Rhodes, trying to grab that third spot. Ben's going to have a little bit of momentum on the high side. Pretty consistently, the fastest truck on the track has been that 38 of Zane. Finally caught Ben, put him away. Now he's going to put his sights on the leaders. Nice center of the corner that time for Zane. What about Ben shifting there down in three and four? We see that every now and then, not that often. But guys give that a whirl. When they feel like the pace has got down so low, then they try to grab that third gear, get a little bit of a shot up off the corner. Passing gear. Passing gear, exactly. Yeah, that's what it is. 
And you see the drivers highlighted. All four championship contenders now inside the top 10. Ty Majeski continues to lead. Just 12 laps to go here in stage number one. Thirty-eight laps in the books. This is the Craftsman 150 Championship race from Phoenix. Jamie Little, Phil Parsons, Michael Waltrip, Amanda Busick, Josh Sims, and Regan Smith. We got everybody covering the action here tonight. So we have six laps to go in stage number one. Ty Majeski has led every lap so far. Corey Heim has hung on to that second spot. Zane Smith. On the move, though, Michael, you mentioned he's been turning fastest lap after fastest lap. Yeah, and Corey Hobbs cut the lead of Tom Majeski's to under a second. It was almost two seconds five or six laps ago. So as they work through traffic, as you can see, that's the difference there. Heim is on a roll. Talked about in the opening, he's the favorite to win this thing, and you can see a lot of speed in that 11 Toyota. And a reminder, if you're just tuning in and you don't follow it all the time, you see those four drivers highlighted. It does not matter if they win the race or not. The one that finishes ahead of the other three will be crowned the champion. And that's because they've earned that right. That's they've right. raced their way here to Phoenix as the championship four and can settle it among themselves. But I think you, I don't think you're going to have a hard time beating Corey Hobb tonight. Rolling right now in the long run. Consistently the fastest truck on the racetrack. You can see just about three truck links now behind Majeski. I love that we don't have to do math tonight. Phil's not over here with smoke coming out I'm of his pen, right? Trying to Michael? figure out stage points <laughs> and where they are. We were busy cats at Homestead <laughs> trying to figure out who was doing what late in that race, winding down with so much action and so tight on that cut line. The cut line is gone. You said it. Now I didn't. I was going to say that. Now it's time to just race for a championship. Corey Heim. Closing that gap just a little bit on Ty Majeski. They've got that lap traffic as the laps wind down here for stage number one. You can see Majeski looking around. Stefan Parsons, Hangarani there just ahead of him in those two trucks trying to so desperately to stay on the lead lap. And then it's going to become a race between the two of those cats. If they're able to, if the leaders aren't going to lap them both, then can Stefan hang on to that spot ahead of Hangarani and be the free pass? Looks pretty good right now. Oh, loose there. You saw Majeski a little bit sideways as Heim tightens down on him. Corey Heim is all over his bumper. One and a half laps to go to the end of stage number one. Corey Heim cuts the dog leg to the inside. Side by side, they go. Final lap of stage number one. Who's going to pick up the win here? So close. Ty Majeski with the edge. He has led every lap so far tonight. And he's going to do it. There's the green and white checkered flag. He'll pick up stage win number one, Corey Heim, second, Zane Smith, third, Ben Rose, and Nick Sanchez, your top five. Corey Heim is going to be a force to be reckoned with for sure. And remember, this is a little bit shorter run than our final stage of 60 laps. Again, assuming we don't get a caution flag during that stage. First stage win for Ty Majeski since IRP. Can he hang on and win it all tonight? Find out after this. Welcome back to Phoenix for the championship race. It's time for the first pit stops of the day. We start with the 99 of Ben Rhodes. His biggest complaint, he just needs more lateral grip since he's really loose on entry, especially in traffic. They're gonna take the right rear rubber out. And it looks like they're putting scuffs on. Amanda? Well, Grant Innifinger just rolled up to his pit box. I do see sticker to Goodyear. They're gonna go on that 23 there towards the end of this first stage. Grant Innifinger was battling with the tightness of that truck. Jeff Hensley was saying, don't worry, bud. We're gonna get it ready for you. They're going to do a little track bar adjustment, some air pressure, and he said, go, cat, go. Regan? Carson Hosovar in the 42 truck started off very good, but that truck fell off a cliff towards, cliff towards the end of the run, needed more speed on the backside. Crew Chief Bill Gould said, I know exactly what to do for that. And the 11 to Corey Heim, not bad. Little tight center, but doesn't want any change. Wow, what a long pit stop for Ben Rhodes. Running right up front, he's gonna come 
out probably in 20th. Way back, you see the orange truck right there leaving the pits. They said they're going to take a rubber out of the right rear, and it took longer than I think they thought it would. That's what's so hard about making adjustments that take extra time. Obviously, air pressure adjustments don't take any extra time. Pit stops are complete. We'll bring them back and drop the green flag once again from Phoenix Raceway. Craftsman is back. And to celebrate our return to the NASCAR Truck Series, Craftsman is offering special discounts to fans. Because teams can count on Craftsman tools to get the job done. And now you can too. When you take advantage of the Craftsman deal of the race, you'll save on the tools that'll help you power through your projects. And this deal, well, it's going fast. So scan the QR code now to get the current deal of the race. The deal of the race brought to you by Craftsman. Welcome back to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Championship race from Phoenix. So we just saw our first round of pit stops and Corey Heim gained a spot, so he'll restart as the leader. Ben Rhodes, though, some issues, slid back, lost about six spots. Grant Enfinger now just behind him. Carson Hosvar with pretty decent stop for him. Yeah, Carson gained four spots on that pit stop. Ben got out better than I thought he was after that long adjustment they made, and then a little bit of potential contact as he exited pit road. We listened to the radio, and he was upset about something that Jake Garcia did, possibly. Getting ready for the restart. Corey Heim starting on the outside of Ty Majeski. What a battle this was down to the end of stage number one. Let's see. Corey Heim said he didn't want any adjustments. We'll see if the truck is as good as it was at the end of stage one. Here we go. Four or five wide. Ooh, a little contact there. Carson Hosevar took a little shot from Eckes. Here comes Zane Smith in the third spot. Where's Crafton going? Ty Majeski. <laughs> he was doing good till he got to the painted asphalt. <laughs> that was crazy. Zane Smith has been one we've been watching all day long. We've heard he's he was the truck to beat tonight. Here he is now battling for the second spot. Derek Krause just ahead of Ben Rhodes after Ben's problems on pit road. There's Jesse Love, the one truck. Jesse, newly crowned Arca Menard Series champion. Moving on to the Xfinity Series next year. Look at this gaggle of trucks. There's Grant Enfinger taking a look to the inside of Christian Eckes. Grant talked about how much he liked his truck early in this race. Got an adjustment there. Caution is out for the third time. The 30 just destroys it. That's Chris Hacker. Flat right rear. I don't know if that was the beginning or the end. Looks like the wheels bent there. Maybe some contact. That sure looks like it. Oh, Marco Andretti. Marco is having a rough go at it tonight. Running back there in about the 30, 31st position. Now he's got a lot of damage, as you see the AMR safety crew. Yeah, terminal damage for that 30 truck for sure. Now that thing's totaled. Marco might be able to uh, make some repairs and get back out. Chris Hacker from Noblesville, Indiana. Making his fifth start this season. Glad to see he's out. Okay. We'll step aside. 94 laps to go from Phoenix. Corey Heim, Zane Smith, your leaders. Welcome back to Phoenix Raceway. As you see the championship four. The four box all running in the top 13 right now. As you see, Corey Heim is now the leader. He's led 10 laps and counting. It is a championship night. We're going to crown one of these four drivers here. Not too long from now, boys. Great onboard views of these guys. Differing issues during the course of the race. Big adjustment for Ben Rhodes has got him outside the top 10. We're under caution because of a wreck that started way up on the back straightaway. Right there, you can see trucks getting out of control. You wonder if maybe somebody uh, tried to crowd in and maybe move up when he wasn't clear, but you see the seven of Marco Andretti on the inside. There's Chris Hacker, the 30, with hard, hard contact to the safer barrier. And you see Chris Hacker in his response, shaking a finger at Marco Andretti. It looked like possibly Marco changed lanes a little bit and caught Hacker, but it's hard to tell back in traffic there. Glad to see him out of that truck, though, and okay. 
A lot of cleanup there as we continue here. There's Marco Andretti, best known for being an IndyCar driver. And of course, that famous last name, Mario Andretti is his grandfather. Michael Andretti is his dad, and he'll take that ride to the infield care center before we can hear from him. Well, we'll step aside. Stage number two, 15 laps in, 45 laps will end it. Corey Heim continues to lead. I probably serve my country, but struggle in civilian life. USVS helped me when I needed it the most. I am now an artist with a place to call home. Join USVS on their mission to end veteran homelessness. Make Camel your cause to honor USVS. Fox Sports proudly salutes our nation's veterans and the organizations that serve them every day. Our veterans deserve to live with dignity and independence, not on the streets. That's why we're making Camo our cause this Veterans Day in support of and to honor U.S. Vets campaign. Post wearing your camo on social with hashtag honor U.S. Vets and visit honor.usvets.org slash Fox Forward to donate and learn how you can help end veteran homelessness. And we thank all of our veterans. We always have so many at each and every racetrack. A lot of fans out there. And Fox Sports always supports our veterans. Mm -hmm. Great causes. It's just a great time to say thank you. It really is. We welcome you back here to Phoenix Raceway. We're under caution for the third time for the incident with Chris Hacker and Marco Andretti. That was a big crash for Hacker. Yeah, significant contact. A couple good stories up in the top 10, though. Taylor Gray right now running fifth in the 17 truck. And Jake Garcia running sixth in the 35. So you see our championship four highlighted in gold. Do you feel like they're feeling any pressure? We need a hero. I've handled the pressure, I think, pretty well so far. Yeah, I mean, I feel a lot of pressure with this weekend uh, being probably the biggest race of my life. Honestly, like, there's pressure all the time. Usually, for me, when I start to kind of feel the butterflies will be before the race, right before intros, as we're gonna hop in the back of the pace trucks. Everybody else at this point is being carted off in the back of the trucks, and they're taking their ride around, and the last four playoff guys are still loading up. I feel like I'm a person that really focuses on myself, so that's the main way I subside the pressure. You know, just to be able to focus on the things that matter and that are in my control is the main thing that I kind of focus on going into this weekend. People are coming around, they're high five and getting ready. They're saying, hey, you know, good job tonight. Don't don't ruin the opportunity, something stupid like that. My past, I really feel like that pressure makes me better. I really like being in this position. I've always, you know, felt pressure being a good thing and it motivates me to be better. I don't feel any pressure, you know. I, I think we're plenty capable of winning a championship. We've won the most races. I know there's gonna be pressure, but there's pressure every week. I, I don't know if there's going to be an excessive amount of, uh, of pressure that, that we're not expecting. It's the fanfare before beforehand that gets the people. But once I'm in the truck, I'm at home. And that's what I love about racing and about sports. Everybody faces pressure. They all handle it and they feel it at different places. But, you know, like Ben Rhodes said, it all goes away once you get in your truck, you strap in and you put that helmet on. Yeah, flip that switch and start that motor. But Corey Heim is putting a little more pressure on the other three <laughs> by putting his truck up front and being so fast. But there's a lot of racing left, and we've seen so many twists and turns here in this championship battle at Phoenix over the years. Corey Heim at 21 years old, just how he carries himself, how he handles himself in different positions and situations. It's been incredible to watch, and he's doing it once again tonight as he'll restart on the outside. Zane Smith on the inside. First time Zane Smith is restarting on the front row. Let's see what he can do with it as green flag waves once again. Great start by Zane down on the bottom, able to go door to door with Heim toward turn one. Sparks flying, trucks going side by side. Craziness. Spectacular restarts. How much fun is this? Corey Heim gets the edge over Zane Smith. Taylor Gray up there in the mix. Ty Majeski swapping back and forth for that top three position. How about Grant Enfinger right now in the fifth spot? The best he's been all night. He's been confident. He hasn't wavered at all about what he believed he had in that truck. 
Lindsey Grant now battling the 17 of Taylor Gray for that fourth spot, and he has it. And a side by side battle just ahead of him as Tom Majeski's gotten on the outside of Zane and will take that spot. Let's get an update on Grant Enfinger. Amanda. After that last pit stop, Grant Enfinger tells his team it is time to go now. I will be in the top five by the start of stage three. Well, he called his shot here. He's already, we're in stage number two and he's up to fourth. And the one man outside the top 10 right now, Ben Rhodes, and we talked about it on that pit stop. They made a large adjustment. It took a little bit longer than expected. He fell out about six spots. There's that 99 truck just behind Derek Krauss in the 77. Good run for Derek up inside the top 10. There's Rich Lucius on the box. You wonder what's going through his mind right now. He's, he's putting himself in a position where he might have to do another something crazy like That's we've right. seen him do so many times. He's not afraid to do it either. And Michael, you called it the call of the year at Homestead. No doubt. Bringing That's his why driver he's, in. That's why he's racing for a championship, that pit call. And these two know how to get it done. Ben Rhodes, Rich Lucius, two years ago, they were the champions here at Phoenix. Let's get an update on Ben Rhodes, Josh. Yeah, and you guys are talking about Rich Lucius being able to be calm in certain scenarios and make some calls that'll get Ben Rhodes back in the game. Well, I talked to him about it, and he says, before races, we go over all different scenarios. So they aren't just pulling a rabbit out of a hat, so to speak. They plan for these sort of things. He said the most important thing I have to do is be confident in my decision, relay that to the driver, because my confidence will spill over to the rest of the team, guys. Into the top 10. Josh goes, Ben, he makes the move around Kraus. So the thing that I love about that is when the crew chief makes a call, wow, look at that damage. The crew chief makes a call, the driver's got to trust him. He's got to go do his job, and that's just exactly how that works between Ben and Rich. He's got a tire rub. That's Raja Karuth. A couple of laps ago, he got together with the 41 of Bailey Curry. Coming off the corner here. Raja's going to try to get the outside, Bailey is going to use the racetrack and move up the hill, made contact with the left front corner of Raja's truck. Battle over the same real estate, you see the outcome. Got a tire rub as well. We'll see if that clearance itself. Sometimes that'll happen, but I think that might be enough damage where he could have some issues because that front end is loose. It's just going to blow back into that tire. Yeah, and arrow wise, that's certainly not helping. Speeds upwards of 150 miles an hour at the end of these straightaways. Ruth back there shown in the 24th spot. This young man has shown some promise this year. We haven't heard about plans for next year, so we're not sure once GMS, his team closes its doors after this race tonight. We haven't really talked about that, but that's been a heavy on a lot of people's minds for GMS and what they've done in this sport. And they too are, are moving on. So Grant Enfinger, he tells us he has a ride full time for next year. We just don't know what it is exactly yet. This bar right now inside the top 10 running eight. We talked about KBM, Kyle Busch Motorsports being sold to Spire. 100 wins, well 45 wins for, for GMS. Two strong, strong long term teams. That, uh, that we're losing here from the truck series. Maura Gallagher, the founder and owner of that team from Las Vegas, Nevada, his heart and soul so much into the truck series. We thank him for all he's done. Two championships, but his focus is on Legacy Motor Club, and that's in the Cup Series on Sundays. Regan. Well, Jamie, the leader of Corey Heim in the 11 truck, we made a lot of, the, of him locking himself so early into this championship for, of course, at Bristol over a month ago. The team had a lot of time to work on a lot of different packages with that truck handling and setup packages. Well, when it was all said and done, they went back to the very first thing that they went to the simulator with where they test those packages out. All that time, they went back to their original plan. What was tried and true from the beginning is what they're running right now. The latest report from Corey, that truck is really good out front. He likes it. It's a nice call from Scott Zipidelli. Sometimes maybe you have too much time on your hands <laughs> to think and overthink your setups. Well, Corey Heim continues to lead with just 15 laps to go in stage number two. Can he hang on and become the champion? We'll find out. Under caution here at Phoenix Raceway. This is caution number four for an incident with Tyler Hill. 
take a look at what exactly happened, but he had quite a bit of damage on that left front fender. Ooh, look at this. Pit stops, guys. Mixing it up. Yeah, they're in their window. They know they can make it to the end. I figured Lucius would pit. I didn't know all of them would come. <laughs> I thought they might just ride it out. See how many elected to stay out. It's like a lot of our championship contenders maybe did stay out. Here comes Josebar Regan. What are they saying on the radio? Oh, Michael, they decided it was time for them to come make more adjustments to Carson Josevar's truck. Just losing grip all around the racetrack. He can't roll the center, has to wait on the throttle. Just been a challenge all weekend long to get that truck exactly to his liking. They're going to work on it a little bit more right now. I like that call. Take advantage of it. Get your truck better. That's fun. We got it. Now we're going to have a totally mixed up lineup when the stage ends as these drivers will elect to stay out. Stuart Friesen, we saw him have trouble early. He was on pit road here. So I mentioned we're under caution for Tyler Hill. This is what happened. It's up against the wall. I'm not sure if there was contact that precipitated that or not. Let's see if we can take a look here. He's already up against the wall. I didn't see any trucks really that close to him, so certainly makes it look like a one, one truck incident. And the team was able to tape it up and keep him on the road. Tyler's a lap down. Corey Heim, Ty Majeski, Zane Smith. You see all of our leaders opted to stay out. Looks like about maybe 19, 20 trucks stayed. I love this. Track. I love it that of the championship four, Corey Himes really the only one that's really been satisfied with his truck, even though he said it wasn't perfect early when it came time to pit. No, 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 leave it alone. It's good. <laughs> I like her. She's coming to me as this race goes on. Well, Sunday on Fox, it's one of the biggest games of the year. Dallas versus Philly, Dak versus Jalen, and America's game of the week. The next chapter in this historic rivalry kicks off Sunday at 4 Eastern on Fox. Kids having some fun throwing the old football. The Lions bye week, that's why they're not. Hey, they were in the promo last week. You got to take it when you yes, get it, Phil, right? Absolutely. What a year they've been having, though. Mm -hmm. I love your head coach. Me too. I like how Me he too. coaches those athletes, fires them up, Michael. Yeah, He's I just. Fit himself. I wouldn't mess with that man. NFL on Fox is so fun to watch on Sunday afternoons. Going to be a good winner of football. Mm hmm. It really is. Let's choose it up, guys. We know where Heim's going to go up top. Pretty much split. And that's because you can go anywhere. You can go everywhere. <laughs> so you don't want to give up a lane. Carson to the bottom there. I like restarting from the outside when you have the choice like Corey Heim. We saw that play out earlier today in the Arkham Menard Series race. Every restart, the outside prevailed. That Tricon Garage and what they've been able to do this year with Johnny Gray and David Gilliland changed the name, added a couple of trucks, switched over to Toyota. And added Corey Heim. Added Corey Heim. He went from Kyle Busch Motorsports over to Tricon, brought on Scott Zipidelli. Scott told me he said there he is right there in the middle, said he had something to prove to himself. He had a struggle of a year last year made a change for his life, his career, and it's paid off. It's sure just it's like lightning in a bottle, you know, when you get that kind of relationship and that chemistry with a young driver like Corey Heim. And Corey Heim, even though he's only 21 years old, he's mature beyond his years. He doesn't seem like a 21-year-old. And he announced uh, he'll be coming back to Tricon for another year in the truck series, no matter how it turns out tonight. So here we go. This has been fun. The restarts. Ty Majeski on the inside of Corey Heim. There's that 38 lurking. And Grant and Finger on the second row. Four wide behind him. Corey on with a great restart as they head down into turn one. Three wide. Here comes Grant and Finger. Look at Carson Hosevar. He's back in about 12th position in that baby blue truck on the inside. You see him coming up on the back straightaway there. He's got the fresher tires. How far can he go in just a few laps? Look at the fourth truck back, the orange, the 99 of Ben Rhodes, who lost those positions on pit road. He's worked his way up just on the outside of the top five. We talked at the very top of the show how important tires were. We're going to get what 
preview of that. Exactly, right now from Carson Hosevar working. Oh, look at Grant. Slips and loses some positions. There goes the 99 around him. Carson Hosevar riding on board right now. He pitted from the eighth position, restarted 12th. He's got four tires, as you guys mentioned. Let's see what they can do for him here. Look how fast that Bama Buggies truck was off turn four. Big jump ahead as he goes into the inside of Jesse Love in the one. Christian Eckes is up to the fifth spot, actually racing from fourth right now. He pitted the same time Hosomar did for four tires. Hosomar. There he is right there. Hosomar hasn't gone anywhere, but you mentioned it, Phil. Christian is on a roll. Christian Eckes, the three-time winner this season. He had that mad mustache going on, and it was sad to see, actually, that he shaved it off because he knew that his championship hopes were done, but he could still go out, out with a bang. Still end tonight with a win. Looks like they've gotten that truck a little bit better. So Chase Purdy way down on the bottom of the racetrack. Another one of those trucks that stopped for tires. Looks like he was going to get by Grant Enfinger. Look how fast Majeski is right now. Able to pull right up on the back of Zane as Grant battles along the side of Chase Purdy. See the new tires prevail right there for Chase Purdy in the Ford truck. Carson Hosebar making his way up. Hasn't made up a ton of ground yet. Really interesting the thinking of the driver when he gets those fresh tires. He tries to make a couple big moves and they don't work. You just sort of lay, settle in a little bit and know that you're going to stay out on those tires, get track position. Maybe don't try to burn them up. We see Ekas, he's hammered down. He's not worried about saving any tires. Yeah, consistently one of the fastest trucks on the racetrack. As we come around here, it'll be two laps to go in stage number two. Ty Majeski took stage one. See if Corey Heim can hang on here to pick up stage number two. Heim has now led 39 laps. It's got to be a great feeling for Corey, other than the fact that Zane's faster than him <laughs> right now. <laughs> other than that 38 truck ride right in his tailgate. Ty Majeski back in third just turned the fastest lap of the race. And now Zane Smith with the fastest lap. Many of us had Zane Smith and Ty Majeski in our championship four, and they're right there on the bumper of Corey Heim heating him up. As Jamie mentioned earlier, many of our championship four also thought those guys were going to be in the championship four. Final lap, checkered flag, green and white is in the air. Corey Heim picks up another stage win on the season. Zane Smith, Ty Majeski, Christian Eckes, and Taylor Gray round out the top five for stage number two. So we'll step aside. Corey Heim has been the man. See if he can hang on. Come back. We've got plenty more racing from Phoenix. Welcome back to the Craftsman 150, and what a beautiful night in Phoenix, Arizona. It just doesn't get better than this. So comfortable. There's snow in the Midwest, snow on the East Coast. <laughs> this is where you want to be. Well, Michael, earlier on the start of the show, I asked you, if you're the other three drivers, how do you beat Corey Hine? So this is an opportunity right now. Do you pit? Do you make adjustments? There's our three crew chiefs that are pondering the same question. Well, one shot's already been fired, and that's Phil Gould for uh, Carson Hosevar. They decided to pit. They're the only one of our championship contenders that did so. And I don't know right now. It's a little bit early to say, but I think it was a good call because we didn't see a lot of fall off. The leaders didn't really, the, the new tires didn't make that progress, and they're getting ready to capture a whole lot of track position is Carson Hosevar. So I think that was a great call. Now, these two other crew chiefs, they need adjustments. They're not fast enough to run with Corey Hunt. And that's what they're pondering. They're going to pit, hopefully make the right call, make the right adjustments. And who knows, Corey Himes going to get hung back in traffic. What's his truck going to be like? Yeah, there are 17 or 18 trucks that, that came down pit road. If they don't come back to pit road, then Corey Himes will restart behind all those trucks. This is a fun part of the race for us fans. Pits are going to be open this time. We're going to see a 
big shuffle in the lineup, and we'll have to see what that number 11 truck's like when he gets back in traffic. A little bit of strategy, perhaps, to play into it. 56 laps to go in the championship race. Christian Neckes will inherit the lead when these guys come to pit road. Pits are open. Josh, they're headed your way. Let's start with the 99 of Ben Rhodes. His biggest complaint, he's loose on entry to turn one when running the wall. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment to try and help him out. Last stop, they took scuffs. This time, they're going to put stickers on. Amanda? Grant Inbinger is making his way to his pit box, and Jeff Henley said in the adjustments of what's going to happen in strategy, he said, I don't care who's going to stop, we're stopping. Grant Inbinger wanted a little more adjustments. It was made in stage two, but said, Jeff, I trust you, and I trust this track. Regan? The 11 of Corey Hines started free that run, ended neutral though. Overall, long runs, the truck gets tighter as he goes, so they're not going to make any changes for it. They're going to let it see how it plays out right now and try to get him a good stop here. All right, Regan. So I heard what we heard last pit stop. No adjustments for Corey Heim. Well, he's been. He's taken a long time. Big, been dominant. But not only did he lose a lot of positions by staying out, you could see Cruz not happy with that pit stop. Some frustration. Something went wrong on the 11 pit stop. We're going to step aside. We'll re rack them and drop the green flag. 55 laps to go. Stay with us. One night, one race, one goal. I will do whatever it takes to become a champion. champion. It's time for Phoenix. Let's win another one. This is my chance. I won't back down. Let's, Let's do, do this. this. One stage remaining here for the championship. The one driver of the four championship contenders who finishes ahead of the other three takes home the title. And for the first time tonight, Corey Heim is not the leader. An issue on pit road has Carson Hosabar right now running in fourth, and he is the best of the four. And that's a strategy call. We saw Hosevar stay out. That gained him all this track position. But here's what went wrong with Heim. He slides through his pit. See the back tires lock up? He's supposed to stop on that red line. He's obviously a foot or two inside of that red line. And watch, when they go around to the other side, there's just no choreography. They can't do their jobs like they're trained to because he's too close to the wall, causing him to lose valuable time. So he's not only a foot ahead of it, but he's about a foot over toward the left side of the wall, which made everything cramped and made it take longer than expected. So he slipped back about 17 positions. Well, this is what I'm interested in seeing. What's this truck going to be like in traffic? Can he just cut through the field? I don't think so, Phil. I think track position is more important than the truck that he showed earlier. I don't remember now. Most of those trucks in front of him pitted before. That's why he's behind them. Zane Smith was actually the only truck that beat him off the pit road with that miscue. Zane Smith's a fast truck. He, he can't afford to give up any spots if you're after a championship. We'll see how it goes. Restart here for Christian Eckes, Chase Purdy. Green flag is in the air once again. Look at that mess behind him. Oh my goodness, what are we, eight Six, wide? Seven, eight wide. Look at Ben Rose getting squeezed there. Down into turn one, Christian Eckes checks out. You see the 88, Matt Crafton, welcome to the top 10. Look at Corey Heim, squeezing up through the middle of trucks. Look at that battle. There's Heim down on the bottom. Grant Enfinger all over the bumper of Corey Heim. Ben Rose shifting gears, making passes. He knows how important it is to stay up, keep up with that 11 truck and finger to the bottom on roads. Three championship contenders right there. You can almost throw a blanket over him at one moment. Look at him, they're three wide underneath the racing surface. Watch this 99 truck. He put this tr oh, trouble. Caution. They're crashing up top. He was a pinball in the middle of that action, and the caution is out for the sixth time for this. The 66, Connor Jones. I think it's Jake Drew in the 61 truck. I mean, the other truck involved. How they made it two or three laps prior to that happening is, is just amazing. You saw that action with Ben Rhodes. It was like that throughout the whole field. Battling for the 16th position when they got together. 
Jake Drew, an Arkham Menards West champion. Sixth truck series start. Those trucks are mangled. They are. You see Jake climbing out of his truck right now. See where this began. Look like Connor Jones just drove in there and ran into the 61 of Jake Drew. You see Haley Deegan turn around there. Nearly, nearly hit by the 20, I think, of Nick Lights. Big crashes tonight, huh? They have been. Great job by the 20 squeezing through there. Mm -hmm. So they come to a rest on the racetrack just before the start finish line. But there's action all over the racetrack and these these hits have been brutal back in the pack. Like Michael said, I don't know how we ran two or three laps before something like this happened. And, and Ben Rhodes, we were looking at the replay of his restart when this crash happened. I mean, he was really in a bind. I think he might have been six wide at one point during that restart. And, and he was hammered down, shifting gears, trying to gain positions. I was watching this truck, obviously, is bright orange, and he was looked like he was getting squeezed from the inside and the outside. Let's watch this again. There's the restart. Look at him squeezing in this hole. It doesn't look like it's even there. It's still gunning it. There's the 66 of Jones and the 61 of Jake Drew. Look at look how tight they are. This is just before the contact. And look on the bottom. There's Corey Heim just trying and hoping he can clear. But watch here. Ben grabs a gear, squeezes in that hole. That's amazing. He knows it's time to go. He's got to stay in contact with that 11 truck of Corey Heim. AMR safety team talking to the their drivers and the drivers talking to each other. So 47 laps to go. We're being told those trucks are actually stuck together. So this could take a moment to separate the two. Just, just glad those drivers were able to get out. So the AMR crew is trying to figure out how to separate the two trucks and remove them from the track. We'll be back from Phoenix. Welcome back to coverage of the championship race for the Craftsman Truck Series out there in Phoenix. It's been exciting so far. Welcome into the race day studio as well. Caitlin Vinci alongside Trevor Bain, Todd Bodine. What do we think about what we've seen so far, especially <laughs> with Corey Heim? Well, he no doubt has the strongest truck of the championship four. Finished second in stage one, one stage two, but finds himself behind the eight ball a little bit right now after that pit cycle. We saw some drivers jump the stage. They pitted with nine to go. Corey Heim didn't do that. 17 trucks got in front of him. Now he's working his way back through the field. Well, when we saw them do that, Trevor, me and you were both like, what are they doing? They need to pit. <laughs> but it depended on the restart and how good a restart he, he could have got. And he did. He did a great job. Went from 18th to 11th. That saved it. We'll have to see if Corey Heim can make his way back up to the front. This is getting very interesting, needless to say, as these teams battle it out to try and get a title in the truck series. So let's send it back to the voices in the booth once again and Jamie Little. Thank you, Caitlin. Yes, you see right there, Carson Hosbar leads the way in fourth right now. You see Corey High made up a little bit of ground. He's shown currently in the 11th spot. So, boys, it's been fun. They're it, working their guts out. It's been crazy. That restart was worth the price of admission <laughs> right there. I think we're getting ready to get another one here, too. And <laughs> it's going to be just as crazy. We know how important it is to gain that track position when they're all stacked up. And Corey High, Ben Rhodes, for the star of the show on that restart. Grant Enfinger also keeping pace. He's in the 12th position just behind Heim. 43 laps to go before we decide the champion. And there's Corey Heim with his work cut out for him. Trying to save a little fuel. You hear it. Isn't that funny? On. You get a caution, you think it's a break. No, not anymore. You know, the drivers always have things they have to do, have to accomplish. The crews are shouting the construction, so you got to be on your game from the time the green flag flies till the checkers. So as we're under caution for the sixth time, here's another look at what happened. Well, we saw synchronized driving. A lot of people just all over each other, but keeping it all together. But in that case, 
It looked like the 66 might have just dove in there a little too hard. They made heavy contact. As you see, we're choosing it up. Some collect Haley Deegan as an innocent bystander there. See, Matt Crafton has made his way up into the top 10 with some really aggressive moves on the restarts. He's been so fun to watch. Yeah, and you know, if you look who's at the very bottom in turns one and two, it's always that bright yellow truck. <laughs> He's cutting it lower than anyone else. There you can see the veteran. 47-year-old Matt Crafton turned over a new leaf. He says he's nice, Matt, now. <laughs> I love that. Well, let's get a couple quick thoughts before we go green. Once again, here's Regan. Well, Jamie, keep an eye on this restart. The 42 of Carson, Ho Carson Hosabar really did not want the bottom. You see him down there. That truck has not been firing off very good on the bottom. And he and the Corey Heim both, the crew chiefs have been telling both drivers, make sure you keep the tires clean. A lot of rubber build up under these yellows on the trucks. Amanda? Sharing that same language, it's been super fun listening to Jeff Hensley and Grant Infinger tonight. He made up 13 spots on that restart and hollered at his team, I'm not giving up yet. They haven't raised this checkered flag just yet. And Jeff Hensley said, I haven't given up either, bud. He's already said, I won't back down. <laughs> It's that time of the night you're going to start singing, huh, Mikey? I'm ready. I'm you ready. You sing all the time. They just don't hear it at home. Championship weekend's got me all jazzed up. Just over 40 laps to go here. Christian Eckes will lead him once again on this restart. And look who's joining him. The two of Nick Sanchez haven't even talked about him tonight as they fan out four, five, six wide once again. There's Matt Crafton way down on the inside. Now he's going to tuck in behind. Chase Purdy. Here comes Carson Hosabar squeezing right through the middle. A little bit of contact. Look at Sanchez taking it to Eckes for the lead of this race. They have to be aggressive on these restarts. Jake Garcia there in third, having a great run again. Zane Smith drove around Carson Hosabar. The options on this track, it never gets old watching them. Cutting the dog legs, saving that time. The guy's up high. The only problem now, Jamie, is this getting late. These drivers know it. And they're squeezing in holes that aren't there. Hello, you can coming see through. right through the middle. I'm Corey Heim. I'm racing for a championship. <laughs> and oh, yeah, Grant Enfinger coming with me. That was a great move. But Corey. There's a great look of the different options and all the sparks. It's so rough on these trucks when they drop down below that. These trucks are tough, and the truckers are too. Remember, Zane Smith came out right in front of Corey Heim on that last pit stop. Zane is up to fifth. Corey's back in tenth. Look at the 99 of Ben Rhodes. That's what you call going for it. He dove in there a little bit hard, didn't stick, but he was making a move, and look at him trying to get to the bottom. Let's watch Ben Rhodes in the 11, Corey Heim on the restart. Oh, chain reaction there. Look, the Majeski was a little slow. There's Ben making the move to the bottom. Ben Rhodes back in 15th right now. All four championship contenders shown outside the top five for the first time, I think, tonight. Ooh, a little bit of contact there, a little bit of a nudge. I would say Ben Rhodes has his elbows up right now. What about Carson Hosomar? Not able to make any ground here. He had on those slightly, old, oh, that's gonna get tight. Had on those slightly older tires, has a track position, but Corey Heim is just one truck behind him now. And working really hard to regain control of this championship battle. What well, Stuart Friesen went around earlier in the race, now up in the fifth spot. The 99 of Ben Rhodes. Hello, I'm here. I need this space. Just a little bit of space. Gotta love that about racing. There's you may be racing for a championship, but you gotta race everybody else at the same time. You don't see that in other sports. There's Corey Heim on board with him just up ahead of him is that light blue truck of Carson Hosovar. That's his target. That's the championship leader right now with Carson Hosovar. Than the three other competitors, and he knows it. He's got his sights set as he closes that gap on the 42. The 11 trying to get around Carson Hosovar. Little fresher tires on that 11 truck right there. You can see left side of your screen, their last pit stop. 
Corey Heim pitted on 95. Everybody in front of him, other than Zane Smith, on 79. And he's going to get to the outside. He's not going to make it. Wow, that was an aggressive move by Hosebar. He said, I'm not letting you up there, buddy. I'm going to cut you off. Corey Heim let that happen then. I mean, he knows he has a faster truck. I think a little bit of patience right here from Heim would be wise. Don't get in the battle that takes you out of this chance to be a champion. We haven't seen a whole lot of mistakes from Corey Heim all season long, which is why he has a streak of 15 consecutive top 10 finishes. He's trying to make up for that last mishap on pit road, and he's doing a nice job. A lot of patience here as he tries to get around the 42 of Carson Hosevar to put him in championship form here. He might do it right here, Jamie. And he does it. Big dive. Will there be a crossover here from Carson? Don't think he's going to be able to fight back. Corey Heim makes it stick. He moves into the sixth spot. He is now the leader of the four championship contenders. Carson Hosebar behind oh. him. And a tap. That was a big dive into the corner. <laughs> Got my attention. Not far behind him, guys. Grant Enfinger in 10th and Ben Rhodes in 11th. They're all within five positions of each other right now. Oh, and he spins him. Carson Hosebar gets into the back of Corey Heim and brings out the caution, the seventh one tonight. Heim is backwards on the racetrack. So is Stuart Friesen. I, I really don't understand that. Well, he dove into turn three and popped him and went down in turn one and just spun him out. And he's frustrated. Well, I mean, I, I, I think, feel the same way he does. What, what, how do you think Corey Heim feels right now? Well, a good thing about Heim is he didn't get any damage. He spun sideways. I didn't mean to him. I did not mean to do that. I thought he was going to take a bigger arc. But the bad news, Michael, you saw Corey Heim falling. But I'm saying he doesn't have any damage. He hit Friesen. Friesen went into the wall. Corey, I don't think, has any damage. He's going to come get four tires for sure. This could be really fun to fun to watch we still got 30 to go I don't call him out yet no I don't know without a doubt he's not out yet and I think you're right I think he comes and gets four tires here you see Corey Heim on the left side of your screen but do our other championship contenders come in and get four tires as well this was just over aggression we gave him the one tap well, this was just spun him out and then moments later, that. But watch time. Slides. No contact. The big loser in that crash was Stuart Friesen. He hadn't have, didn't have anything to do with anything. Just got wiped out. Your core is going to have just a slight bit of damage on the right rear corner where he got into Stuart. But shouldn't really affect him. How that truck runs, but tough, tough break for Stuart Friesen, who is having another good run here at Phoenix. On board with Carson Hosevar from his vantage point. You see how much he slid up to get to the 11 of Corey Heim, a full lane up. had done a nice job of running down Carson, made the pass cleanly. I guarantee you, Corey didn't see this coming. No, sure didn't. Right there, just up the hill. He ain't get out of here tonight. I promise you that. Okay, bud, just take a deep breath. Reset. Reset. We can do this. He can do this, and I think what he has to do now, Phil, is just put that behind him. Go win the race. Come get those tires, Regan, and that's exactly what they're doing. Well, Michael, you heard, uh, heard how calm they were on the radio right there. That's how it has been the entire time since he was spun out. Going to check the right rear to make sure there's no damage. Give that a good tug to make sure it doesn't have any issues as the race goes on. Otherwise, the truck has been very good, but impressive from Scott Zibidelli and spotter Tony Hirschman, how they have kept their driver in the game and how their driver has stayed in the game to get refocused right here. Need to make sure that fender's plenty clearance. 
We know how important that area of the truck is. They're running up, up, upwards of 150, 60 miles an hour. So aerodynamics do matter. You don't want that right rear caved in. Looks like the team did a nice job of pulling it out. Yeah, you don't want it bloused out too much either to be to act like a parachute. Cool, calm, and collected. We'll see if it'll be enough to get to the front. 28 laps to go from Phoenix. Getting down to business here in the Craftsman Truck Series. About 25 laps to go. Who will be crowned the champion? Major turn of events. As you saw, Carson Hosevar getting to the back of Corey Heim. He's shown his 21st. Carson Hosevar second right now, Regan. It's been a busy radio for Carson Hosevar. Take a, take a listen to what the team had to tell him. I imagine there's no question that was on me, right? Yeah, I mean, he was holding you down like we were holding him down. Just got it his left here. Need to check it off here, bud. Refocus. Yeah, the man, I don't want it. They've been trying to get him refocused, get his head back in the game. There's still a championship to win here. Trying to keep their driver in the game. Hard to shake that one off. As we're ready to go here, Nick Sanchez on the outside. He'll be the lead truck over Carson Hosevar on the bottom side of the racetrack. And green flag in the air once again. Great restart by Nick Sanchez, something we've seen all year long. Five, six wide again. Terrible restart for Hosevar. Falling back through the field. Three wide up front. Ooh, oh, contact tight. up and there. And they're still wrecking. How did they keep them straight? But Sanchez ran Majeski into the outside wall. Christian Eggers, I think, got a piece of that as well. Jesse Love up there in the sixth spot. How about, is that Ben Rose? Ben Rose to the fourth position. And, and going forward right here. They have been working on this race truck. Ben Rhodes has been up front. He's been in the back, middle of the pack. Here he is in third spot and right now in championship form. If he can hang on here and stay ahead of the other three, he will be crowned champion for the second time. And there's contact once again up front. Nick Sanchez, Zane Smith. Wow, what action. Watch the 42. Up front, see what happens to him on the restart. Got pushed sideways by the 98. And look, look at that orange 90. number. Yeah, the he's bright, coming. Right orange truck, right up the middle. And watch Josebar just fade. He's all the way back to 18th, outside the top 15. And there's contact hard into the outside wall goes Majeski. Ben Rhodes was really aggressive on this restart. There's Hosebar, the 42. Watch Ben Rhodes just drive right by. Golly. We don't need another caution. I can't handle these restarts. <laughs> it's too crazy. Right now, Ben Rhodes and Grant Enfinger racing for a championship. There's Rhodes. Oh, trouble. Stephen Parsons. Big crash in turn three. Three trucks involved. Stephen Parsons, you see there, the 41 as well. That's Bailey Curry. And, and the 43 of Daniel Dye. Wow, that's not what Rich Lucius wanted to see. He wanted to, he's like me, let's just run this thing out. I think we got a, in a pretty good spot. Did you just see or just say, Michael, you can't, I you can't stomach another restart? I, 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 didn't, I didn't want that it, because it's only going to get worse. They're just going to keep, it's going to be like the Xfinity race at Martinsville. They just keep pushing and shoving until there's nobody left, hardly. This is a big crash. You see the oil running water from the radiator running down the racetrack. This is going to take some time to clean up. Meanwhile, Corey Heim up to 12th. Don't forget him. Oh, I yeah. told you he wasn't out of it. And they're going to hear from him before this is over. Meanwhile, Carson Hosevar back in 18th after that restart. Does Phil Stephen Parsons get turned here? Yes. He just got dumped by the 41 of Bailey Curry for some reason. And then you see Daniel die with nowhere to go. I think Stefan went to the 41 truck to say, what were you thinking? Man, I'd like to think we can get to the checker flags without having this happen again and again. We're going to have less than 15 to go probably. Well, we, well, we saw with Hosevar just, you know, spinning out Corey Heim. It's, it's, some of this stuff is, I know it's getting down towards the end of the race, the end of the season, but 
you have to race a l with a little bit more respect, I think, than, than what we've seen here. Well, I think a lot of people watched that Xfinity race last week and thought that was, there's Stefan saying, what could, what could have possibly been, you been thinking? Yeah. It's a great opportunity for Stefan Parsons. We know Phil, of course, working alongside you, how hard your son works. He takes any jobs he can. He's got his helmet ready. He's able and willing to jump in whenever there's an opportunity, and this was a good one for him. Finally made his way up into the top 20, and I think he was, you know, looked like his truck had gotten better and better and was going to gain some more spots, but, uh, but uh, unfortunately it's not to be. So under a red flag here, eight cautions tonight for 46 laps. Mm. Imagine the emotions being one of those contenders for the championship. Just when you think, all right, this is it. We're getting down to it. I'm in position. Boom, a caution comes out. Well, and and think, a red flag. And think about the mental game for Carson Hosevar. He started on the front row, got turned sideways. He's all the way back to the 18th spot here. His team told him to shake it off. He just couldn't quite do it. Under caution, we'll be back. Welcome back to the Craftsman 150. It is championship race as we're embarking on Saturday morning on the East Coast. But if you're out West, it's prime time, baby. We still don't know who the champion will be, but I'll tell you what, Ben Rhodes, he has not given up. Sitting third right now, he's in contention to win this championship. So, you know, he's just sitting there, eyes wide open. Let's, anything right let's now, dial right? him up. Let's try to talk to him. Hey, Ben Rhodes, the Fox booth. Uh, you got a copy? I got you guys. It sure has been fun watching you, Ben. I'm telling you, you have made some tremendous moves. And obviously, you and Rich have that truck in a great position right now. You've got 20 laps to go if we don't go over time. And that certainly can happen. But you've been in this position before, Ben. What do you got to do here to get, finish it off? The biggest thing right now is not getting caught up in a wreck. This has been certainly the wildest playoff race that I've been a part of. Uh, it, just, it seems like uh, everybody's going five wide, and it doesn't matter where you're at. It's all the way through the pack, and uh, it's just really hard to, to find the proper place to put your truck. The track also seems to have a little less grip this year, or at least I'm sliding around a little bit more. So all in all, it's been an exciting show, I'm sure. But I'd like it to just calm down and be nice and smooth if we could get the lead here on the restart. That would do it for us. Well, buddy, you've done an awesome job, and we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Uh, finish her off. Thanks, guys. Let's hear from his crew chief, Rich Lucius. Josh. Yeah, standing by with Rich Lucius. And Rich, first of all, how are you feeling about the position you guys are in and what's it going to take to bring this thing home? Uh, it's going to take a great restart by Ben, which he always gets. So we need to get clear of the 23 right here and then uh, just set sail and focus on our race. And hopefully these last 20 laps go green. Uh, but I feel like we're in a really good position. Thanks, Rich. Regan? Scott Zipidelli, you've done a fantastic job of keeping your driver calm in the truck, your spotter, everybody communicating very well to keep refocused on what the goal is. Nine spots, roughly 15 laps when we get back to green. Can you get there? I think we can get there. Yeah, as long as we don't have any more cautions, I think we'll be okay. Uh, Corey's done a great job. Obviously, we got some adversity. We've got to uh, you know, beat that. But uh, truck's been really strong since we unloaded, and hopefully we can get the safe light Toyota Pro in victory lane or at least uh, clinch this championship. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, gentlemen. And you see what happened really? to Corey Heim when he went around and got the contact from Carson Hosevar. Really fortunate not to get any more damage to that truck than he did. You could see just running a normal line down the front straightaway to the inside to make the move on Stuart Friesen. Yeah, watch the 42, those, you see those black lines? He moves up outside of the line he was in to make that contact. Dramatically. And when it happened, I think he lost his focus and, and was really sorry that it happened and sad that it happened and wasn't able to get it together on that restart. I know he got pushed sideways, but he just kept falling back all the way to the 18th spot. We'll shake it all out. We still have 20 laps to go. Stay with us for the ending here in Championship Night. Welcome back to coverage of the Craftsman 150 Championship Weekend out there in Phoenix, Arizona. 
We have a title on the line, and needless to say, it has gotten very interesting in the closing portion of this race. <laughs> Everyone's talking about, of course, the incident between Carson Hosevar and Corey Heim. Where is Carson's mindset right now? Because we saw what happened and him in the truck, seemingly very apologetic in, in, in a way. What, what do you think yeah, is the mindset? Well, you know, Carson made a mistake here, right? He just got in too deep. He, he hadn't been running the bottom. There wasn't as much grip as he thought, and he pushed up in the court. Common, that's what happened. Well, Carson's a good kid. He feels bad. You can see him here. He's, he's upset. He's mad at himself. He doesn't want to make those kind of mistakes. The problem was stock car driving, race car driving, is the most the one sport that takes constant uh, concentration. Right. He couldn't get his concentration back. Yeah, it's hard to regroup. And then you have that restart. He starts on the front row, goes all the way back to 19th in a lap. You can't have yeah. that. Those kind of things happen and kind of crumble when the pressure's on at the end. Hopefully these guys can fight back, especially right there. Uh, Corey Hine. All right, it's going to be interesting. Back to Jamie Little and the guys in the booth. Thank you, Caitlin. Yes, the long red flag. A lot of time to sit and think about the race that has happened and what they can do from here on out. We saw what happened at Martinsville after they had a 28-minute red flag. All heck broke loose. Well, let's hear from the crew chief of the 23, Amanda. Jamie reported earlier in the show that Grant Infinger is riding with a quote on his dash that says, all things are possible for those who believe. You guys have executed perfectly tonight. Jeff, there is one truck separating you guys from a potential championship. Why do you believe that Grant Infinger is the one that can do it? Well, I mean, it's, it's a matter of it's who wants it the most. And I don't know if anybody else in this garage it when he wants something, he goes and gets it, you know, and we've been pretty fortunate. We've uh, made all the right adjustments from practice yesterday. We weren't very good. We were a 10th place truck at best. And I don't, still don't think we're good enough to, to outrun that 11 if he hadn't had any issues there. Us and the 99 are pretty even. Uh, it's just a corner of who gets out front. But, you know, the guys have done a great job on pit road tonight. The guys that work on this thing all year long have done an amazing job. Uh, so far, knock on wood, we haven't had a DNF all year long. Probably the only team in the garage area could say that. So. Hopefully we can get our champion power equipment Silverado past that 99 and get far enough ahead of that 11. He can't catch us, but uh, we'll see what happens. I, I think we got a shot at it, and that's all you ask for. It's what everybody works for. So. And they haven't given up on each other all night. Regan? Carson Hosevar's crew chief, Phil Gould here. I see the tires on the wall. Been an eventful night. You guys have been working to try to make this truck fire off better. Can you make it fire off with these tires at the end now? Yeah, I think so. As we can see, anything can happen. And, uh, you know, we kind of got ourselves in a bad predicament there, but it's not over till it's over, and we're just going to keep fighting. Thanks, Phil. It's all you can do. You got 150 miles to try to get a championship, and I believe this team knows that they've slid back far enough to where they're going to have to have some tires if they're going to go fight for a championship. Maybe too little too late, but uh, probably going to go back to green with right around 15, 16 laps to go. And I would predict that that won't be the last caution. Yeah, we have we've saw at the very top of the show how uh, tires late in the going have, have made a difference in the outcome over the last two, three years. Good to see trucks rolling once again and the two drivers involved in what brought out the red flag. Bailey Curry and Stephen Parsons have been checked and released from the infield care center. Waiting on word from Daniel Dye. I'm sure he was fine too. We saw him getting out of his truck. I got the official word. So after this time by, I believe they're going to open pit road. Well, on the East Coast, they're just getting Saturday started. So start your Saturday strong with Big Noon Saturday as Fox in the seventh ranked Texas host number 23, K-State. It all starts with Big Noon kickoff live from Austin at 10 a.m. Eastern. Then it's K-State, Texas. That's all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Today. Today. <laughs> Today. <laughs> For we're, you East Coasters. We're racing into Saturday. West Coast. You guys are probably enjoying drinks and maybe even some dinner. Well, we know, at least we think that host of ours coming down pit road. Is anybody going to come with him? I don't think so. Not, not any of our contenders. I think Corey Himes in a good spot. He's going to restart on row five or six. So we've seen guys get to the front from further back faster. <laughs> Sanchez is coming. 
as well as Majeski. Majeski was into the outside wall. He might need an adjustment on his fenders. Here, here comes Hosabar. Gonna be a lot of trucks in between these trucks that pit right now on this restart. Carson Hosabar shown in the 18th position as he comes down pit road. Zane Smith shown as the leader. What's uh, Stewart's just coming out of his pit. Regan Carson Hosabar making his way to the pit box. And Jamie, you just heard it from Kruchi Phil Gould. Really the only option these guys have at this point on those older tires, lost the track position, come down, get the four tires right now and do everything they can to get back up through the pack as far as they can. And uh, obviously a disappointing night for these guys. It's been a little bit of a struggle. Nice adjustment there for the 42 as well. I think you saw Carson, excuse me, Stuart Friesen showing his displeasure with the move that Carson made by slowing down as he went toward his pit just to say, you know, I'm not cool with what you did. He was, of course, an innocent bystander. When Heim went around, he got into Stuart Friesen, who was running in the top five. Well, here's our battle for the championship right here. Potentially the 99 of Ben Rose, the 23 of Grant Enfinger, and they're going to have company. They, they know the 11 is coming. Just going to be a matter if Corey Heim can get a clean restart, if we can keep our championship contenders out of the wall and, and race for it. I still feel like this is the guy you're going to have to beat. He's got better tires. He's got a faster truck. And he's motivated after getting dumped, Lee, racing in front of Carson Hosevar. Well, this has been fun to watch. It has. All night long, and now the two most experienced of the championship four right now running third and fourth. Just unpredictable, just like we expected. I told you at the start of the show, I just, I love championship Friday night. It has a little bit of everything, and we've seen that. A dominant truck here for Corey Heim. Now he's in a position where he's going to have to really get aggressive to get through this field. We're going to restart with less than 15 to go or right around 15 to go. You know, a couple of the trucks in front of Corey Heim are his teammates, Taylor Gray and Dean Thompson. We're going to start choosing here. Do those guys just get out of the way? If I'm Corey Heim, I would like to think so. <laughs> Certainly not going to battle him very hard for sure. Let's see what they decide to do. But he's going to cut him, cut Corey Hyman any slack. Zane's going to take the outside. Ben, the outside. Grant Enfig will line up side by side with him. Oh, no, no team orders there. It didn't look like. Yeah, that, that was a late dive by was Taylor, Taylor Gray. Gray that it did was. That. that was some space that Corey Hyman would have really liked to have had. Put that truck on the outside of him. I think Corey's going to line up ninth. It looks like. See that one again. Late decision right there. I'm glad I'm glad Corey was paying attention. <laughs> exactly. Like, what, what are the you heck, doing? Man? <laughs> what are you doing? What a what a crazy night for this young man. Remember at the top of the show we showed Sheldon Creed winning this race in 2020. Oh. Went from ninth to the lead in one lap with what? pressure tires. Didn't I tell you I couldn't handle another restart? Well, <laughs> my hands are sweating. I'm, I'm, I'm the nerves. All, I'm all messed up over here. It's been got, fun to watch. I got bad news. This might not be the last <laughs> restart. I'm, I'm going to go with it won't be the last restart. Keep an eye on that road, too. That's our championship battle for now. And they, don't, they couldn't care less about that row one. They want them to just go. <laughs> get out of here. I don't care. Just don't hold us up. Championship night. NASCAR's biggest weekend all comes down to this. And green flag is in the air once again. Keep your eye on the 23 and the 99 in row number two. And where's Corey Heim in all of this? He's coming down to the bottom. Ben Rhodes is slow on the high side. Loses a spot to Jesse Love. Ben Rhodes back to sixth now. Look at the 11 on the outside as they battle down into turn three. Jesse Love right on the back 
of Chase Purdy, but here comes Heimer on the outside. He can see the guys he's racing, but he slides off turn four. Slipped a little bit there. Long way to go, 14 laps to go. See Ben Rose trying to chase down Grant Enfinger. And he's there, Bill. Gonna try to move to the inside of Grant. These two can't seem to shake each other. Keeping their eyes on where that 11 is. They know how good, how strong he's been tonight. Corey Heimlet, 47 laps. Got a hit from Hosomar. Went around, has had to fight his way back. Corey Hyman, seventh now. Grant Enfinger with control of the championship as it stands right now, trying to hold off the 99 of Ben Rhodes. There's plenty of time left, but if I'm Ben Rhodes, I want to try to make quick work of him if I can, because you never know if another caution comes out, you have more restarts. Corey Heim up to six. Two spots from where he needs to be. Meanwhile, Zane Smith doing what he did last year, leading at the finish, trying to pick up his last win here in the Truck Series before he moves on to Cup. But all eyes right here on Grant Enfinger, Ben Rhodes. I'm worried about Corey Heim. Hasn't made much progress since he got around Jesse Love. You can see Jesse Love battling back to the inside. Maybe that right rear damage has hurt the performance of that 11 truck. We talk all the time about how critical that right rear corner of these trucks are for side force. He's about two seconds back from Ben Rhodes as it stands right now. His teammate Jesse Love on the inside. Yeah, that's just... That, he needs those positions. Yeah, this is a result of that right rear damage. I'm sure he was so strong early. Now he can't go anywhere. Meanwhile, Hosabar is up to the 14th position, as you can see, left side of your screen. As the leader crosses the line, we've reached our craftsman. Ten to go. Ten laps to decide it all. Ben Rhodes can taste it, can he? Right there in front of him is Grant Enfinger. He knows he has to get that position. One little slip by Grant, and Ben will be right there. Ben knows what it tastes like to stand in victory lane as a champion. And Finger has come so close. What do you say right at the start of the race? I love my truck. I love what I've got here. There's the guy in control of the race, Zane Smith. But this is the battle for the championship. These two drivers. Grant and Finger. Jeff Hensley is crew chief. They've been optimistic tonight. Although if Corey Heim gets to him, they're not sure they're, they have anything for him. But right now, they're holding off the 99 of Ben Rhodes. I think Corey Heim is too far off the He's pace done. right now. He's about three seconds behind this battle right here. That right rear damage hurt the performance of that truck. He did a great job on the restarts getting in position, but when he got clean track, he couldn't go. How about Grant and Finger again driving for GMS? They announced about five months ago they would be shutting the doors after this race tonight. Moving on, moving their focuses to Cup on Sundays. Grant and Finger, this entire operation. A lot of people without jobs. Some people know where they're going, some don't. But they put it aside. They put the noise aside. They got themselves here to the championship four and right now are in contention to win a championship. Right now, Grant Enfinger says, let's race this out. These remaining six laps, please no caution. Maintaining that nice gap. Last okay. time by, they both ran 28.03 seconds. Same time, last time, right on each other. Grant Enfinger, they welcomed their baby. second baby, a baby girl named Caroline. Last Friday, she came a month early. And again, able to focus on the task at hand here. What a sweet off season it would be. Can't you know, even right, do it. Right now, Ben Rose's tongue is hanging out, trying to coax every hundredth of a second out of that truck. And Grand Enfinger's looking in that mirror, wondering how that, how much gap he has on Ben Rose, but focusing on his job. You can hear Ben Rose shifting gears here. Pulling it down to third as he comes into turn three and then up to fourth on the front straightaway. Right now, he's got about a seven-tenths lead over Ben Rhodes, and he's maintaining, guys. Four laps to go here at Phoenix. 
what a story this will be for Fairhope, Alabama's Grant Enfinger. Oh, no. And caution is out again. Can you believe it? Carson Hosabar destroyed his truck. I was looking on the scoring monitor that Corey Heim was, was backing up to Carson Hosabar. I have to believe that uh, that's, that's really right. I believe, he just, I believe he just said that's fair. Well, I think Corey Heim decided he couldn't win it. I don't think Carson Hosevar was going to win it either, though, but he had battled his way inside the top 10 and had caught Heim. But Taylor Gray's Taylor an, Gray. an, an innocent victim of, of that. He had a great night going. Top 10 most of this evening. Three laps to go. Caution out for the ninth time. Grant Enfinger says, I wish y'all could have settled that after the race. Yeah. And let me run my race to the championship. See the damage on the left side of the 11. I think there's also right side damage. And you talk, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Significant damage to Corey Heim. Yeah, that's, that's a shame. Carson Kosovar coming up on the 11 right here. And you see Taylor Gray around. Yeah, you would. That's what we call payback. You know, we, Corey doesn't wait to want to wait till next year. He wants to make sure. Ooh. Big hit. It's right on board with Corey Heim now to see from his vantage point. Paybacks in racing. What a turn of events for these two championship contenders. But now we have to have another restart. You know, Grant Enfinger was was headed to that championship, it looked uh, like, and now he's going to have to withstand another restart. And then the choose, where do you go? And, and, and you know, Grant and Ben both are going to be depending on Zane and Christian getting the start they need. There's Maury Gallagher sitting on top of the pit box right now for Grant Enfinger. Yeah, Mike Beam up there as well, along but, with Jeff Hensley. But how about for Ben Rhodes and Rich Lucius right now? Now's their time to pounce. They weren't making up any ground as those laps ticked on by. It gives them a, another life. But I hate it. I hate it happened that way. I, I, don't, I don't like that either. No, that's just guys racing for a championship and well we're going to have nascar overtime but first we're going to step aside as we take one more look here at what happened Corey heim carson host of our two of our championship contenders bam in the wall more from phoenix after this not happy And we welcome you back to the Craftsman 150. It's championship race night, and we can taste it. Oh, so close. As you see there, NASCAR overtime. And Ben Rhodes right now sitting fifth, but could trouble be brewing? So when I'm at speed, I can shift fine. It goes into fourth gear fine, but I probably, I don't know, over half the restarts tonight. I go to get it in the fourth, and every, I'd say over half of them, the first attempt in the fourth gear doesn't go. But I have enough momentum, I'm able to recover because I get a good, you know, first, second, third. But third to fourth, for whatever reason, isn't working. That's trouble, or could be. Could be if he can't sure. get a clean shift into fourth, then uh, he wouldn't have to really shift, I don't think, Phil, So he got down the back straight away, and he needs to grab fourth then. So maybe if he gets a great start, he's got enough room to work it into gear. But this could be potentially some big trouble for the 99. Yeah, he, you know, we're going to only have a two lap overtime finish, so he can't afford to lose much ground to Grand Enfinger. I have, I have to believe that Zane will take the outside again. I would think Christian would take the front row. And that, that's like I, I said, those two need those, those that front row to get a great start so that they're at least even. One of those front row starters has a shifting issue or has a tire spin. That'll directly affect them in row two. 
Not the way he wanted to end his night here for the championship race. Carson Hosebar making his first championship appearance, and you see his truck being taken out on the wrecker. Meanwhile, Zane Smith continues to lead here. He's led 26 laps and counting. Hard to believe that he's only won one race this year, and that was way back at race number one almost nine months ago. So fast, though. And, and, and right. the, the crazy thing is uh, Phil and I have some garage sources, <laughs> and number 38 and number 19 was on everybody's <laughs> short list of who was going to win this race, and there they sit. And what disappointment it has to be for those two not to be in our championship four. I think they were on a lot of people's championship four list, and Christian Eckes can taste it. That last lap move at Talladega that went wrong, the uh, pit road issue uh, that he had at Homestead, also that restart violation, all those mistakes just have to get you in the gut. Same thing for Nick Sanchez. Remember, Nick Sanchez tied for fourth and lost on a tiebreaker to a better finish in that round to Ben Rhodes. And remember, he ran into a Tanner Gray on the way to pit road, and his pit stop was six, eight seconds slower than his average pit stop, and that was under green. And all he needed was one more position on the racetrack, just one more. Grant Finger went, Grant and Finger, Amanda went to the outside, got Ben Rhodes down on the bottom. I'm taking a look at Jeff Hensley. He's finally sat down after slamming his hands at the side of that caution. We were talking about the payback between Corey Heim and Carson Hosovar, but what we forget is it affects everyone else in this race, including Grant Enfinger and Ben Rhodes. Grant has radioed over that his truck feel, feels great. He knows that Ben Rhodes is having shifty, shifting issues, but I think one of the things that needs to be said, the radio from Grant Enfinger, the team said, those guys are classless. Well, frustrated with this caution coming out once again, and understandably so. But good news for Grand Enfinger fans. Everything sounds good, copacetic, <laughs> inside that racetrack. Oh, man, but this is intense. Check out the overtime rules there. Two laps. The leader takes the white. The next flag ends it. Caution prior to the white, and we get another restart. Guys, keep an eye on that two truck of Nick Sanchez. He has the freshest tires right now in the top 10, about 10 laps fresher than the rest of the field. Got to have a perfect restart. Perfect restart right here. Here we go. NASCAR overtime at Phoenix Raceway. Zane Smith, Christian Eckes, they're crowding up. Here comes Ben Rhodes. Watch out. That orange and black number 99 up the middle. He doesn't make it stick. Grant Enfinger is right there. Those are the two battling for the championship. They're together off turn two. Contact back there. The 23 Enfinger looked like he got into Christian Eckes. The battle for the lead. How about Ben Rose? Look at Grant Enfinger's in trouble. And oh, there's a caution. Again. It came out before the white flag. Oh, Ben Rhodes could see that white flag, and they pulled it back and threw the yellow. Derek, Derek Kraus around in turns three and four. And we had just heard Ben Rhodes talking about his shifting issues and getting it into fourth. He had a great restart. He didn't have any problem that time. No, he sure. didn't. Grant, I mean, Enfinger, though, may have a little bit of damage. There was some contact. He's dropped all the way back to the ninth position. You see the left front corner of that truck. A little bit of damage to the left rear as well. Oh, and you can see the rubber, the number of letters rubbed off that right front, so he scrubbed against another truck or the wall there. We got, we got a cop now, Jeff. Yep. We got nothing to lose now. You wow. heard him coming to pit road here for four fresh tires oh my for goodness. a green-white checker. It's worked before. A battle of attrition tonight, gentlemen. But we're going to have 20 two trucks on the lead lap. Yeah. This is a tall order to think that he could get it done. But who's to say we won't have multiple restarts here the way these cats are driving? We can clip off five or six trucks on each restart and have a couple, couple three of those. Man, Ben Rhodes did everything he needed to do on that restart. So let's take a look back at that last restart from overhead. Well, I just, you got to give it up for Ben Rhodes. He was so aggressive. Look at this. How he squeezes it in. And Grant got hung behind Zane, who really didn't get the jump that he needed. That here I thought Grant was going to be okay, but but then he gets squeezed by the 19 of Eckes. 
and watch him fall back after that. Watch what brings out the yellow. Derek Krause, bam. Jesse Love goes up and they just chain reaction. I think Jesse Love body slammed Grant Endinger. That's where the damage on the left side came on Grant's truck. So much contact. Watch Jesse Love, that one truck. He got loose. Got loose into Grant. And Derek Krause paid the price. Ugh. I feel your pain. <laughs> this is. It's just an emotional roller coaster. It is, because you know what it means to these guys. Grant Enfinger could taste the championship. And here he comes, takes that left hand turn. He's coming down pit road. Now he's going to restart outside the top 20. Oh. Two restarts to go. We were getting ready to crown him a champion. Pop some champagne, right? That's right. Amanda. This team has been absolutely flawless all night, and this is what it comes to right now. You heard Jeff Hensley say we have nothing to lose, and the crew guys jumped into action. Grant Enfinger coming in for tires and fuel. Jamie. You see him pulling those fenders. So we'll have another NASCAR overtime, our second attempt here. The ball is in Ben Rhodes' hands, in his court, as they say. Yeah, unfortunately, though, if it, if it turns out that way and Grant's not able to make a miraculous recovery, then he's going to feel like he got cheated out of out of this uh, championship. Well, they just hard racing. The restart was as crazy as we expected. Ben Rhodes very aggressive up the middle. And then they just ran out of room off turn two and unfortunately Grant got the short end of the stick. Ben's in a great spot here. Just needs two laps without crashing. How about Ben Rhodes, Josh? Well, Ben Rhodes is aware of the situation with the other four championship four drivers. Rich Lucius came over the radio and told him, hey, be aware of the situation. We don't have to win the race. Just make sure you get through the gears on this next restart. Ben was excited after getting through fourth gear last time, but they got to do it once again. No doubt. One more time. How about that? The 2023 playoff championship four, second, 22nd, 24th, and Hosovar out. Yeah, last year, three of our championship four all led the race in the last five laps of the race. How about Ben Rhodes? Okay, we mentioned it earlier. If he wins, the press conference that we watched after his championship performance two years ago, it'll go down in the history books. Here it is. We are now joined by our 2021 NASCAR Camping World Truck Series champion. Um, <laughs> let me say something here. Libations are good. Championship's awesome. This is going to be the weirdest press conference ever. How do you view your career now at, at this point? There's a lot of bubbles in this. We're like a match made in heaven, and I'm loving it. <sighs> My wife looks really embarrassed. Are you embarrassed? We're champions. Yeah. This is the best conference ever. <laughs> That's right. Bye, guys. <laughs> made a lot of new friends tonight. I consider you my close group now. So we have to explain. <laughs> They're on the championship stage. There's pictures. It just takes a long time. Meanwhile, everybody and their friend is bringing a beer to him. So by the time he gets in the media center, he's he's having a good time, feeling good. <laughs> but the funniest part was when he looks over and realizes somebody took his beer and replaced it with the water. <laughs> just classic Ben Rhodes. But Michael, he's a Kentucky guy like you. We got to get rid of the beer. Maybe we get a little bourbon in there if he celebrates tonight. What do you think? I think an old fashioned might be right yeah. up his alley. Hey, he's got another thing to, to celebrate, he by the way. Told us this week. He told us this week that he and his wife, Caitlin, expecting baby number two. Where'd all the yellow guys go? In our pylon. All four of them have been in the pylon the entire race, <laughs> and now we're only left with one. Let's see what Grant Enfinger, how far he can scramble. Ben Rhodes just looking for. Two laps. That's a lap and a and a few feet of green, of green flag racing. Yeah, just without, get to the white flag without a caution. White. He's already almost seen it once. 
So we need to go green. We take the white flag. The next flag will end the race. Otherwise, we do it all again. Another NASCAR overtime. Just a reminder, we've had 10 cautions for 64 laps. Here we go again. Zane Smith on the outside. Ben Rhodes with shifting issues on the inside. What can he do here on the restart? And Christian Eckes and Zane. Oh, oh trouble. Trouble. Zane Smith goes around. There was contact by Ben Rhodes behind him. We're going to have to see how that happened, guys. Oh, big problems for the Zane Smith on the restart and a lot of damage for Ben Rhodes. He ran right into Smith. Oh, my goodness. What an amazing turn of events. We're going to do it again. But they've got to take a good look at this truck and make sure it's going to be all right to finish. Let's see when scoring when they come back around and see where Grant will end up. There's Grant. He's 18th now, so. It's Jack Wood. Jack had a good run going. He was solid all night. We need to see what happened here. I believe there was just problems getting through the gears, maybe, for Christian. Could one of the front, front two trucks. So That's, slight fender rub, but we don't see any smoke. Whew. I think that I felt like the, I don't know. Ooh. That was coming to the green. So what happens after they take the green is yeah. the question. I, somebody I think, missed somebody missed the shift. I think, I think Zane think it, missed the shift. I think it was Zane as well, and he hit the back of Zane. And there's the jump. And right here, he pulls down in front of, and there it is, missed yeah. the shift, and bam, just nothing in the world Ben Rhodes could do. Missed the three, four shift. Uh, Christian Eckes was so lucky. He swerved out from behind the 38 at the very last instant. Well, Go the, on board here. This is on board with Ben Rhodes, and you can see when Zane jumps, gets a great start. He's able to pick what line he wants, and he went to the bottom right in front of Ben. Right there. You heard Ben grab fourth, and I think Zane went for fourth and missed it. Yeah. So Zane Smith led 34 laps. He went around. Christian Eck is being shown as the leader. Chase Purdy having the race of his life tonight. Jake Garcia strong. Jake Garcia is moving on from the team. McAnally Racing said that he will not return. So where does he go next year? He's maybe driving for a ride. And then there's Ben Rhodes. <laughs> How bad is this damage? Is it too bad? Will he have a big fender rub, cut a tire, or is it okay to get through two laps here? Yeah, Rich assured him that it was going to be okay. A little bit of a fender rub. He said it's going to be fine. A little hope and a prayer. Just got to make two laps. And there's the mess. Does Grant just slip through here? Oof. Oh, barely. That's Enfinger back in 17th. So remember, Hosabar is out. Enfinger would be the next guy, obviously, in line back there in 17th if something happens to Ben Rhodes where he can't complete these two laps. But they think they're good. It doesn't look like it's rubbing at all. I think we're going to be fine. We got what we got at the moment. Yeah, meaning it's good, or yeah, it's meaning it's rubbing, but you're not going to tell me. It's fine, but it's fine. <laughs> Either way, if we're not changing. It's fine. It's going to be Just, what it is. It's fine. <laughs> uh oh, is it flat? No, I don't think so. Don't say it, Michael. I think it's. it's that doesn't look. Maybe it's just flat. Though. That's a rub, though, isn't it? Yeah. That what's, that's what's changing the color of the yeah. tire. Yeah. When they go green, it's going to start smoking big time, I believe. Rubbing that Goodyear off that tire. And, and may I point out, I said, I believe. I said, it's going to smoke big time 
I believe. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> this doesn't look good to me. Rich said it's okay. <laughs> but it's what fine. if we have another caution and another overtime? Well, that's what that's what Grant Enbinger needs right now. He's going to need a couple more cautions. I'll tell you what's going to happen if we have another overtime is we're going to invite another time zone <laughs> to Saturday morning <laughs> racing. <laughs> we're not far away from doing just that. We're going to invite that central time zone. Yeah, they're coming on over. He's celebrating a championship on a Friday night and a Saturday, depending on where you are. So Corey Heim continues. He actually got the free pass. He was a lap down with the repairs they had to make. And he got the free pass that time. What's happening later today, Jamie? Well, it's a big noon kickoff live from Austin at 10 a.m. Eastern, followed by a big noon Saturday matchup between Texas and K-State. Then it's Penn State taking on Maryland. It's all on Fox and the For Fox Sports app today. Maybe we'll just go straight from there after we go <laughs> off the air right. from here. Those promos started as Big Noon Saturday <laughs> tomorrow. Now they're today. Again, depending on what time zone you're in. So how about this? After all that Corey Heim has been through, he's no longer in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> he fell off the pylon. <laughs> you got all excited. <laughs> I did. I'm like, what? Well, that's a turn of events. We're going to choose her up, though, and see how Ben's right front tire holds up. Can it make two miles? As if we need more drama. As if he needs more drama right now. That tire blows out. Let's slide Grant Enfinger oh, boy. into the equation. He has a little bit of a buffer here, about 12 positions. Christian Eckes in control of this race. Matt Crafton, solid top 10 run. Here comes Grant. See the yellow truck there. He's not limping or anything, is he? Doesn't look all, so. all together square, but maybe he's all right. We got squeezed on both sides. Yeah. Derek Krause in the 77, who had brought out, I believe it was two cautions ago into the wall. He has been checked and released from the infield care center. Two of our drivers in the top three have never gone to victory lane. Jake Purdy and Jake Garcia. Jesse Love is in the top five as well. What is four, fourth start ever, fourth or fifth start ever for Jesse Love here in the truck series? Let's do this. Third truck series start for Jesse Love. Top five. Pace truck is off. NASCAR overtime for the third time. What will happen? That's a great question. <laughs> what will happen with that right front corner of the 99 truck in control trying to win a championship? He just has to hang on for two more laps. Christian Eckes is in control. Chase Purdy, Jake Garcia, Ty Majeski. They're all ahead of Ben Rhodes in the 99 on the outside, bumping and banging as the green flag drops again. How about Chase Purdy out in the lead? Oh, oh no, but Jesse gets turned goes around. around. Jesse Love got into the back of him. Caution is out again. Matt Crafton with a big and spin Crafton. around. Grant was very close to that situation right there. Oh, me. It's working out as good as it could possibly work out for Grant. 12th caution. Angarani. Zane Smith with a lot of damage also on pit road. Matt Crafton with two or three 360s in the middle of all that mess. Watch this restart. How did it all start? Yeah, Jesse Love is gonna, gonna get to the inside of Majeski and turns him around and then they start running at each other up on the racetrack. Meanwhile, Ben Rhodes is saying, look, I got through the gears. My tire's still up, doing everything right. I think if I'm Ben Rhodes, I feel a lot better right now because I know I can go. And there wasn't a lot of smoke off the right front of that truck. He's got something he can race them with. You can see his good restart there. It's hard to really put that on Jesse Love, though. He was trying to make his move around the inside. A lot of other trucks involved as well, though. 
was not a real good start by Eckes. Looks like he spun the tires, Michael. And look at that push Purdy got. And then Love just tried to squeeze in, I think, there on Majeski a bit. Colby Howard, the nine truck, also involved. He made some contact with the outside wall. Zane Smith, not the way he thought he'd end his night. On board with Grant Enfinger. Watch how close Grant comes to being involved in this. Uh, Gunder on right on through there. Look at this mad rush to turn one. Everybody able to drive away though, so maybe it'll be a shorter caution. What about our leader? Chase Purdy, we've talked all year about how he gets better and better. Puts himself in a position here late to grab his first victory. That'd be kind of cool for Chase, that whole team. And how about for Kyle Busch Motorsports? Go you know, out a winner, about, right? That's right. Everything that they've done in this sport, 100 wins, perhaps tonight, number one, number 101. That's right. Now we have some yellow on our pylon over there. Jamie. Yes, let's get an update on Ben Rhodes, Josh. Yeah, and crew chief Richard Luce just asked Ben how the truck was on that restart. He said it turns halfway decent, but then Ben voiced some displeasure with the guys wrecking behind him as he continues to stress out as he tries to win this championship, Amanda. Josh, you'll remember that Jeff Hensley said we have nothing to lose. On that last restart, Grant Inningfinger was able to make up for position. He is going to have the freshest of tires in this championship hunt. They're hoping that they can get green flag racing to the checkers with Grant out front. Eight trucks separate Ben Rhodes from Grant Enfinger. So we'll do it again. Yes, we will. <laughs> About an hour ago, feels like we were pretty close to, to crowning the champion, giving it to Grant Enfinger with two or three to go. And now we've been trying to give it to Ben Rhodes here for the last <laughs> four restarts. It's true what they say. Cautions breed, breed cautions. cautions. So we'll have to do it one more time. NASCAR overtime number four, ladies and gentlemen. For you following along at home, thank you. I think four is a record that we've ever had. It'll be worth it, though. Stick with us. See who the champion will be. 23 races over the course of nine months to get to this point. Michael, you said it earlier in the show. Tonight can change lives. Yes, it can. You walk around with a NASCAR championship in one of these big series, the big three. And so often you hear a a guy that won a championship and they say it just makes him hungrier to do it again <laughs> because there's so many things you forget about the night and what happened. You want to go back and relive it. And ben might have forgot a lot of things. <laughs> he knows it was a good time one way or another. There was there was bubbles in his water and really had him intrigued. <laughs> Whatever happens, if he wins the championship, they need to just put a, a camera on him and just follow him around. <laughs> Yeah, mic him up and put a camera on Yeah, him. the Ben Rhodes simulcast. Ben told me the other day, he said, you know, Mike, I don't drink much. But when I do, I did it. I did it. <laughs> I do it right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't forget, too, that his truck owner, Duke, Duke and Rhonda Thorson, tried to win another championship. They've done so much for the sport here. Look at that damage on the front of the one truck there. You see Jesse Love right behind Ben. Mentioned Got that. Right front damage. How about the 0 2 of Caden Honeycutt right now running in the sixth spot? I looked back earlier in the race because I've always got my eye on Caden. I think he does a really good job in whatever he gets in. He was running 27th or 8th, and I'm like, you know, darn, I thought he would be better than that. And look at him now, <laughs> all the way up in the top 10, running in sixth. You mentioned Duke and Rhonda and their daughter Allison and how much she's done with this race team. Four championships. Over the years, their commitment to the series has just been incredible. On the cusp of maybe, maybe winning 
championship number five. Yeah, three of our ten playoff contenders all came out of Thor Sport. Obviously, Ben Rhodes, the only one left. That's Jesse Loves. Oh, boy. That's a bit of a bumper bar that's gone awry there. Hmm. Michael. So. What? What, what you got? Jane? I was just going to say that, you know, I'm just thinking big picture, you know, the bourbon and celebration and maybe a, like a chartered yacht or something. Oh, I don't know. Coming up. I'm trying to weave tapestry. How long have we been on the air? Hey, look at us last week. <laughs> <laughs> we started yesterday. We started yesterday. I know that. 1240 on the East Coast with the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show coming up November 12th at 6 p.m. on FS2. It's like lifestyles of the rich and famous, Michael, and you were there for the first time. Yes, uh, along with my buddy Ricky Carmichael, we were judging the boats, checking out the creativity, the ingenuity, just how beautiful those boats were and how crazy powerful some of them are. I think you should have bought us about a 50 or 60 footer, Michael. Yeah. Uh, that was a few investments ago, Phil. I might have been able to figure that out. I, uh, I've bounced along with some uh, some some questionable decisions with life in general, but it's it's all working out. Let's go racing before we get in any deeper into what I've done wrong. <laughs> all right, lights out. Here we go. Ben Rhodes to the bottom. Choose it once again. NASCAR overtime number four. Remember. They have to take the white flag, and the next flag will end the race. Whether it's a caution or the checkered flag. We haven't been able to get to that point yet. We'll keep trying. Grant's going to restart in the 13th spot inside the seventh row. It's not over. It's not over. And I mean literally because we could see another overtime, but Grant Enfinger can see Ben Rhodes. And he's got fresh tires, and he's got a chance. Still drama, still action to go. And I like the fact that Grant's on the inside. I think you can make more moves on the inside than you can on the outside. I liked him on the outside last time because that's how he got that's through. That's how he run. missed it. That's how he missed it, exactly. You get down on the bottom, sometimes you don't have as many choices on lanes you could take. Ben Rhodes certainly not in the clear. Still keeping our eye on that right front. Saw Raja point to the bottom, maybe telling Grant if that's if he's better, go that way. Here we go. We're going to try it once again. Chase Purdy on the inside. Christian Eckes on the outside. Let's see if they can get through this cleanly this time. Green flag in the air. They. Oh boy, watching the 99 of Ben Rhodes. Look at Grant Enfinger. Here He's comes Grant. Move. Here he comes. That's him in the yellow truck in the inside. He's about four trucks behind Ben Rhodes right now. Ben's the middle of three wide. Christian Eck is out front. We've got a truck in the wall. Tyler Ingram in the wall. Are they going to keep it green until the white flag comes out? They took the white. This is officially the last lap of the race. Can Ben Rhodes hang on? That was worth the wait. What a drive by Grant Enfinger, but even more so by Ben Rhodes. Staying cool, staying calm, and holding off Grant Enfinger. That was amazing. Even after they took the checker, Ben was afraid to back off the gas. He kept on going. Ben's eyes, you could tell. He's like, is it over? Is it really over? Did we do it? Look how they finished, fifth and sixth. Christian Eckes gets the win. Great drive by him. Cap off an incredible season, his fourth win of the year. What about two, three, and four? Jake Garcia, Chase Purdy, Jesse Love. <laughs> Great finishes by those three with a chance to win. Caden oh Honeycutt goodness. comes home in sixth. Dean Thompson, seventh. You could tell Ben Rhodes is smiling under that helmet. The 26-year-old from Louisville, Kentucky. 
his second career championship in his eighth full-time season. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Thank you guys for everything. This is incredible. I'm so appreciative and grateful for this opportunity, everybody. Think about the season that Ben Rhodes has had, three different crew chiefs that he's worked with, couldn't find the results, couldn't find what he was looking for. Barely made it out of the round of 10. Didn't even have a top 15 finish in those three races, but then did they turn it on in the round of eight? Duke Thorson decided they needed to put the magic back together. Put Rich Lucius back with his driver Ben Rhodes after winning the championship two years ago. They come out swinging in the round of eight. Seventh, second, and second. They come to Phoenix and win the championship. Well, let's hear from our winning crew chief. He's with Josh. Rich Lucius, you return to the 99 team and you end the season with the championship. You had to sweat that one out at the end, huh? What a crazy race. I mean, it was... But it's about this team. It's about this 99 team has been through so much this year. And uh, Josh Hankish in our shop actually uh, said this all properly. He said, we're like a uh, baseball team. We had a starting pitcher, Jared Prince, that got the deal going and got the win at, at Charlotte. And then uh, and then we had Brian Ross come in the middle there and do the, and uh, I came in and closed the deal out. So I can't be more proud of these guys and I'm happy for these guys. And I also want to say, Thank you to Grant for racing us clean at the end because he could have easily dumped us like everybody else did all night long, but he raced us clean. So I'm just grateful. Congratulations, Rich. And remember, it was the call by the Rich call of Lucius. The, year. the call, the call of, of the year. year two weeks ago at Homestead. Brought his driver down, put tires on it, and they fought. They fought their way, and it came down to a tiebreaker between him and Nick Sanchez. It went to Ben Rhodes and put him in this position and they fought till the end. Had a tire rub on the right front. Couldn't get it, shifted into gear in fourth gear. Had issues on the restarts. And look at that truck. Wow. <laughs> Every corner of it's used up. In Vegas, they say that's battle born. I believe it was. <laughs> what a race. Championship flag. championship flag, Ben Rhodes. He said that flag's bigger than that checkered flag that Christian's going to get. What a great guy. Regan, these are the interviews we live for as pit reporters. You've got Ben Rhodes. He is a champion once again. Jamie, he is a champion absolutely for the second time. Ben, so many places and so many things we need to talk about from tonight. But first, two-time champion Ben Rhodes. How does that feel? I can't even believe it. Let's go! Man, I, I hate when people do that on TV, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but dang, this is so awesome, man. Ah, to, go, to go 25 laps into overtime, you know what that feels like? I almost lose it three times. Look at the front of the truck. It's crazy. Uh, I didn't think we were going to make it. I thought we were going to pop a tire. I thought anything that could have gone wrong was going to go wrong. So. Grant almost got me. Hats off to him. He ran a great race. I uh, I wouldn't want to race against anybody else for the championship. He raced me clean, and I respect the hell out of him for it. You talk about Grant almost getting you at the end, and then there obviously you had the damage to your truck. Were you aware as you're coming off a of turn four how close it got? Oh, I saw him. I'm watching the replay right here. I saw him. He went for everything, but he ran me clean, and I thank him for that. You know, that's what these championships are all about. It's unfortunate we had so many cautions, right? But we ran each other clean. All of us did tonight. And, oh, great show. I love you guys. Thanks for all the fans coming out. I love it. Thanks, Kubota, Campers in, my team, Thor Sport Racing, Ford Performance. What a team. I don't know how we pull it off, but we got here and we did it. Ben Rhodes, your 2023 Craftsman Truck Series champion. Amanda? Grant, I want to tell you, both Ben Rhodes and Rich Lucius thanked you for racing them clean in that last part of the race. As you replay the last lap, what could have you done different? I, I don't know. You know, um, it was just the original green-white checkered there where we went four wide. Uh, you know, Ben gassed it up there on the bottom. 
drove us in, in the 19 and, and tore up our truck, and, and then we had to, to restart from 22nd there. So that's kind of what uh, what ended our, our run. Obviously, we, we got close there at the end. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe if he didn't have such a run down the back straightaway, but I needed to get under him to, to make that pass. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's a uh, it's a shame that the championship came down to to a, a race like that with you know 15 green white checkers or whatever it was right there, 30 laps extra. Um, I feel like we did everything we we could to to win this this race there and just kind of got used up right there. Um, championship racing it's just uh, incredibly unfortunate to, to end GMS racing like this. Uh, I really felt like we we uh, we had that championship in in grasp and. To be honest with you, I don't know if I'd have done anything different. Um, just uh, wasn't meant to be. Jamie. Well, he went down fighting. Very respectable race for him tonight. Just came up a little short. How about those who hoisted the trophy with multiple championships? You got our own Todd Bodine there, two-time champion. And look at Ben Rhodes adds his name there. He's actually the youngest driver with multiple championships in series history. Pretty exclusive company right there for Ben Rhodes. Just a beautiful thing to be able to join that class of Craftsman Truck Racers. Hall of Famer Ron Hornaday. Well, Corey Heim was the truck they were all chasing for most of this race, and then it went sideways. He ended up bringing it home 18th, Amanda. Corey, do you stand by the late check on Carson Hosovar? Uh, ask him if he stands by in the first one. I mean, I, I got my right rear destroyed. Well, he wrecked me, and then I got my right rear destroyed. And, uh, you know, from there, I had no side force. And he put it on my door out of two, and I lost control. So um, just really got to hold our heads high for a great year. I feel like we had him worn out tonight with our Safe Flight 200 GRD Pro. Uh, truck at Garage and Toyota Racing just does a phenomenal job. And really had a great truck, championship caliber truck, but uh, just didn't go our way. We're taking a look at the replay right now, and as you said, you talk about the season that you had. How do we describe this one going forward? Uh, it was a great year. I mean, it was a phenomenal year for us. I mean, this is our worst finish in like, I don't know, like six months. So, um, you know, really put together a good race and really hope that the guys would race me clean. I got a lot of respect for everybody in the field, but clearly not him anymore. But, um, you know, it is what it is. It's uh, part of racing, and unfortunately, I turned into a wreck fest, but um, I did all I could. We did just take a look at the retaliation that was there. How did you plot the payback? Uh, it wasn't retaliation. I had no side force. He put it on my door and I wrecked. It was an incredible season. You see those three win stickers right there, 15 straight top 10 finishes. I believe the last time he finished outside the top 10 was back in April. Yeah, and the uh, good news, he's going to be back next year, and he'll be contending for another championship with that guy right there. Loved his interview. Yeah, he's a he's a fun guy. Really appreciates everything he gets to do. And um, 20, 27 years old, and he's a veteran. That's yeah. got to feel pretty cool as well. He's twenty six, Michael. Oh, when's his birthday, age, Jamie? Uh, maybe maybe it was today. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to welcome Mountain Time to the Saturday <laughs> party, if you will. It's uh, just just past twelve o'clock. What you think? I mean. The garage doors open, I think, the, at this point, like 13 hours ago, and these drivers and these teams worked. And then to go through the emotional roller coaster that he went through, to have that energy when you jump out, it's just, that's what, that's why we do this, right? Yeah, and 29 laps of overtime. 29 laps of overtime. In the condition his truck was in. I, I think they were all in that kind of condition, though. <laughs> I love when he finished up the interview. There's Ty Majeski giving his teammate a little high five. But he's like, where's my team? Where's my team? He wanted to celebrate with the boys who put him in this position. There's his team. They're on the big stage, the big championship stage. There's that beautiful trophy. Craftsman tools, good to see Craftsman back in our series. What a year it was. There's Rich, you're gonna reach down there and Talk to him. There's not a straight corner on that truck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to the presentation. There's the big hug. Congratulations. How long before he gets a libation in his hand? <laughs> They're good, he said. It's flying all around him right yeah. now. 
championship we, weekend. Gotta love it. We talk about multiple overtimes. Look at our Fox cameramen, women, everybody working hard to bring these beautiful pictures and this wonderful celebration to the folks at home. And all year long. Yes. You know, tremendous work by our entire Fox Sports crew. We've got a great team and really thankful that we have the relationships we do with Rich Lucius and Ben Rhodes, all the drivers and crew chiefs. We have an open book. We can talk to them every day about their sport, this sport that they all love so much. And it's really cool to be able to know Ben and know Rich like we do and see them have this moment and be able to celebrate. And, and I got caught up and I kind of forgot that this is the last one. This is the last race, last show of the year. Longest season in sports. And Michael, you mentioned, I mean, we wear these guys out asking the questions week after week and these drivers, all the interviews that they do. We appreciate that wholeheartedly. Well, you see him, Josh Sims is at the championship stage. Well, that's right, and it's the moment everybody's been waiting for as we crown the champion for the 2023 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. This year, it's Ben Rhodes doing it for the second time in the last three years. We've reached the championship stage. Right now, we're going to start with Tony Merritt, the Craftsman VP of Marketing and Sponsorship. Tony? Awesome. Well, Ben, congratulations. What a race. On behalf of Craftsman, Congratulations on being the 2023 Craftsman Trucking Champion. I messed that up, but that's all right. Congratulations. <laughs> and now I'm going to turn things over to Ben Kennedy, NASCAR Senior VP of Racing Development and Strategy. Thank you, Josh. Ben, it feels like it was just yesterday we were standing on this same exact stage crowning you as a Truck Series Champion. That was two years ago. And now you're a two-time champion. You join an exclusive list of competitors that are able to say that. You made us proud two years ago. I know you're going to make us proud again this year. So on behalf of NASCAR, the amazing fans we have here at Phoenix Raceway and the million fa of fans around the world, congratulations. You are a 2023 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion. Here's your trophy. Ben. <laughs> First of all, congratulations. Second time in three years, you are on this stage celebrating a championship. You had to sweat this one out. They, a lot. they all are. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel, though, compared to the first time around? Oh, just as good. I mean, look, the first one was a relief because I was down and out, and we somehow made it back on a green flag run. Now, I was just stressing for 25 laps in overtime, messed up hood, the transmission's not shifting properly, wheels knocked out of whack, and here comes Grant on new tires. But thanks to him for racing me clean. I think we all raced each other very well tonight. I just love it. This is great. Thank you to Duke and Rhonda Thorson, everybody at Thor Sport Racing. This is a fantastic organization. We got Kubota, we got Campers in RV, Farm Paint, we got Tenda. We, we got so many great partners on this team, uh, not to mention Ford Performance, not to forget them. They're awesome. We've uh, built a heck of a program, or Duke and Rhonda have over the years, I guess. It's been around longer than I've been around, so I'm just proud to be a part of it. We saw what the celebration looked like two years ago. How will the celebration tonight compare to that one? You just hang on, Mama Jamma. You about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> ben Rhodes, your 2023 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion. Oh, Jamie? bad Mama Jamma, Josh. That's what he brought up in that post-race interview. I can't wait to see what happens. There's Duke and Rhonda there behind the trophy. Well, moments ago, Amanda caught up with race winner Christian Eckes. Well, the celebrations are on down here in Victory Lane. There's champagne everywhere. The truck is covered with it. Christian is covered with it. I talked to you earlier today, and I asked you if you were at peace from Miami, and you said not at all. You said that the goal was to win this race tonight, and you have done it. When you look at that trophy, does that alleviate any of what happened in Miami? Uh, I think it makes it worse. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that one's going to sting. It still stings. I mean, it's awesome to win. It's always awesome to win, especially with our great partners. But, uh, you know, to come short of, of the goal of winning, 
winning a championship and being able to come and win the, the final race uh, uh, kind of stinks for sure. So um, it is what it is now. We can always look back in, in Monday morning and quarterback it and, and say that we could be champions. But, you know, at the end of the day, we, we aren't. And, and at the end of the day, I'm also really proud of, of the whole 99 group. That was my team last year at Thor Sport uh, for the most part with a, a few different pieces. So um, super proud of them. And, uh, yeah, it is what it is. The winter photos will continue here for the fourth win on the season for Christian Eckes. Great season indeed, and those mixed emotions for sure for Christian Eckes. We, we talked earlier, this is the hardest race to win if you're you're not a, a championship <laughs> four guy. You win and you're like, what what what's happening here? What what could have been, especially for Christian Eckes, so strong all year long. One happy man there and the mixed emotions there, but he got the win. What a solid team. There's Bill McAnally right there. Chase Purdy coming over to congratulate the team. Chase, a great run and finishing third. Can I just say, Christian Eckes looks so much better without the stash. <laughs> <laughs> well, he makes it fun, though. He grew the stash for the championship he run, did. and he couldn't wait to get rid of it either, I don't think. Championship champagne, ready to fly put their hats on backwards, get the goggles on. There it is, the 2023 Truck Series champion in his eighth full-time season. The Kentucky boy gets it done. Louisville, Kentucky, making Kentucky proud. My buddy Ben Rhodes, Man, what an they, awesome year. They really turned it on, got one win this season. We counted him out, I think a lot of people did. They didn't see him making it to the championship for a man. It was lightning in a bottle. Can you guys believe, though, 106 days away, February 16th, it'll be the 2024 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Start to the season. It's already around the corner, but we've got a nice off season to come. But we thank all of you for riding along all season long. For Phil Parsons, Michael Waltrip, Regan Smith, Josh Sims, Amanda Busick, our entire Fox Sports team. I'm Jamie Little. It's been a wild ride. We loved every moment of it. Remember, Sunday on FS1 NASCAR Race Day. Congratulations, Ben Rhodes. He's a champion.